Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Random Number Generation. This is episode 47, Earthbound Ancient Cave and PK Scramble Randos. Again, there are multiple Earthbound randomizer types taking place tonight. We're very much looking forward to that. First, though, if you've missed out on any of our GDQ Hot Fix shows, check out our archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, we're very happy to have you all back here. Feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out our live shows and yes if you're watching right now this is live starting most nights at 7 p.m eastern we'll be shifting times for some of our gdq hotfix shows check out gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix for more information gdq some of best segments is now launched on youtube it's a highlight channel with regular videos like our main channel but with small highlight reels for all of our main events and hotfix and of course tonight I'm very proud to announce please stay tuned after random number generation for aimbot that is going to be our new show that will be piloting tonight very 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 much looking forward to that but with that being said how are y'all doing oh not too bad I'm pretty good uh, my name's Chaz aka Stochastic I'm the developer of the ancient cave earthbound randomizer uh, we've got a great crew with us uh, I'm joined with Jay Tolmar on uh, commentary he's the developer of the pk scramble randomizer hello everyone i'm glad to be aboard and commentating both of these randos and for our first race for the ancient cave race we've got two uh great runners we've got andy perfect hello everybody i am andy perfect thanks you for uh, taking care of us tonight jazz yeah he's a longtime earthbound speed runner and uh former world record holder and all sorts of great stuff and uh, also great at the Ancient Cave. Uh, we're also joined by Thomas, T.S. Jante. Hello. Thomas is uh, my official play <laughs> tester uh, for the Earthbound Ancient Cave randomizer and also really good at it. Uh, so we're going to have a great race here tonight. We've got a random seed all queued up and uh, I think Andy, you can go ahead and get uh, your entry in and uh, then Thomas will count us down. Once you've got all your character names in. Call them. As the, as the race Late gets on away, we'll, we'll explain exactly what the Ancient Cave randomizer is and how it works. Uh, and then afterwards, stay tuned for the PK Scramble randomizer. We'll, we'll explain what that one is and how it works. As we have two very different, very uh, great randomizers that the community is running both of and really enjoying. Uh, and as developers, I'm loving, loving to see everyone enjoying both of our randomizers. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, this is definitely cool having like two entire different ways to do this. And they're so different that sometimes you see like runners getting very confused when they're trying to switch back and forth, which personally <laughs> I think is a great time. Yeah, it's true. All right, it looks like both our runners are ready. So uh, Thomas, you can go ahead and count us down whenever you're ready. All right, Andy, on press forward. Ready? Three, two, one, press forward. And they're off, and you'll see in the Ancient Cave Randomizer, we're starting right in Ness's room with all four of our party members. So, the big thing about the Earthbound Ancient Cave Randomizer is we've entirely ripped out the storyline of Earthbound, we've ripped apart every map, and we've recombined all of the rooms into a nine-floor dungeon. At the end of each floor is a shiny spot, one of the eight shiny spots uh, from Earthbound with one of, the, one of eight bosses at it. These runners will have to proceed through all the floors to get to the ninth floor, and at the very end of the ninth floor, they'll have to find and defeat Gygus. So just walk to Gygus and you win. It's that simple. Along the way, they'll be checking items, uh, checking boxes for items. They'll be fighting enemies. Enemies have uh, randomized names and some randomized palettes and backgrounds and a lot of fun stuff. And they'll be powering up along the way, hoping to get some key items that will help them in the Gygus fight. But... Fundamentally, it's just as simple as walk to Gygus and beat him, and the first one who does it wins. You make that sound a lot more simple than it has been in the times I've done it. These caves are so confusing to walk through. 
Oh yes, this is definitely a challenge. Your first time playing in Ancient Cave, uh, runs will often take, uh, you know, it's not uncommon for seven or eight hours uh, for your first time playing in Ancient Cave, just because it's so easy to get lost uh, and confused in all of, uh, somewhat similar looking rooms in Earthbound and finding your way forward. There's a few steps, okay, Andy has already found the boss for floor one. I can just tell you from looking at the, that room that he's in, that's the, uh, shiny spot for Fire Spring, so that'll be the boss for Floor 1. He's just trying to despawn some enemies, Andy using some pretty common uh, vanilla Earthbound speedrunning tactics, trying to despawn enemies to get out of his way uh, to go as fast as possible. Are the spawn plates there the same as they are in vanilla? Like, I know in vanilla it's very difficult to despawn there because there's so many plates. No, these spawn plates are entirely different in this, uh, in Ancient Cave mode. So there can be enemies where there aren't in vanilla, and generally the spawn plates are much more difficult to despawn. So, Andy's coming up, they'll say this is the first Your Sanctuary location, because this is the boss of Floor 1, and the boss is Frankie Stein Mark II. So, so how do the go. bosses work in this? Are they all their vanilla stats? Uh, bosses, like all enemies, will have their stats shuffled and randomized. So they may have stats from enemies that are of nearby difficulty, and then they'll also have them adjusted on a bell curve a little bit. Fortunately, when you start with Paula and Pooh, you start with uh, PSI Freeze, which is an extremely strong attack for these first couple of floors. So Andy just fired off a freeze there, and he's on to floor two. Thomas is still looking around floor one. He didn't take the right path. Uh, that Andy found, so it's going to take him a little bit more time to get off of floor one. Now, so just, Andy has encountered, uh, sure, Andy has encountered this robot. This is a scripted enemy, so there's two different types of random battles you could encounter. There's the random enemy spawns, but then there's also the scripted enemies like this robot. The scripted enemies uh, do not have their difficulty scaled. So that was actually an extremely difficult fight, and Andy used the big bottle rocket that Jeff comes with uh, as a big one-shot damage dealing item to take care of that enemy. And as you'll see, he's getting a ton of experience because that enemy is kind of out of place for this floor. It's way more difficult than all the other enemies here on floor two, but it also uh, gave a lot more experience. And he found the Casey bat. That's an interesting vanilla item in Earthbound. That's a bat with extremely high offense, but it misses three-fourths of the time. And he's gone ahead and equipped it, so he's going for what we call Mudville strats. Wearing the Casey bat, Ness will have extremely high attack, but will be missing three quarters of the time. And now Thomas has found the boss for floor one. As you see, he's gonna go ahead and take this green swirl. If you're not familiar with Earthbound, when you approach enemies from the back like that, you get a green swirl and you get the opportunity to attack first or you get a guaranteed run away on the first turn if you want. Thomas will be taking down Frankenstein just as easily with freeze and he will also be on to floor two. I'm amazed how fast I got through floor one in this. Like, the few times that I've done this, it's been like a half hour slugfest to get, like, anything started. Oh, yeah. Well, part of it is both of these runners have run dozens and dozens of seats, so they know all the little tricks. Uh, one, they know all the little tricks of navigation. Uh, usually most runners will have a, se a set pattern of which doors they check in an area. Like here in Threed, I believe there's uh, on the neighborhood of 12 doors going in or out of Threed. So if you are new to this, it can be extremely easy to forget a door. Uh, also, if you're... Oh, so Thomas uh, hit this same scripted encounter and unfortunately the robot called for help on the first turn, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble doing enough damage uh, to kill this robot. I don't know if he's going to be able to. Let's uh, some jerk robots. Yeah, it's a pretty difficult robot. Um, I really like how in this rando, the towns just end up being these giant junctions. Like you don't think of the fact that a town has so many doors in it until you play it this way. Yeah, it's so many doors, and they're particularly difficult for normal Earthbound speedrunners because so many of the doors they don't use. Like, they just go into random houses with a random NPC in it. So it's hard for the runners coming just from normal speedruns to remember which doors are doors you can go in and which doors are just doors that you knock on and get some text. I was going to say, those, those knock-on doors, um, like, I've completely forgotten which ones are those. You don't have to do those in Scramble either. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. Andy found a full heal here. The, there is a one guaranteed free full heal on each floor. The 
sanctuaries like this giant foot are one of them. That's a guaranteed free full heal and revive for all of your party members. Thomas did get through that fight with the robot, even though it called for help. That's huge. So he's going to, he's also going to go with Casey Bat Strats, and he got a bunch of experience for that. I saw some people asking much. about the, yeah, I saw some people asking about the auto resolve mechanics, so the auto wins. Uh, normally in Vanilla Earthbound, the Casey Bat would help with uh, giving you auto wins, since that would be a little overpowered for the randomizer. There's a little hack that when you're wearing the Casey Bat, you cannot get auto wins. So that, that's how we resolved that problem. But we wanted to, uh, generally the items scale, so you'll get better bats as you get deeper in the cave. A floor nine bat will be a lot better than a floor one bat. However, if we put the Casey bat where it belonged uh, at the end, no one would ever use it because you just use one of the other bats that has normal accuracy. So instead we leave the Casey bat in like floor one or two. Um, so you have the option to use it with the accuracy hit, but we take away the auto win ability. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Did you, like, figure out which items go at which depths manually, or is there some sort of process to it? Uh, yeah, so for the Ancient Cave, there's some algorithms that look up the items and kind of determine what they are, and then I had to do a, a couple uh, fine tweaking to make sure things end up in a place that makes sense over, you know, watching the community run, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these seeds. Oh, makes sense to me. I'm um, actually curious on this same way on the enemies. Like, I've noticed that they started out with dogs and stuff, but now they're up to nooses and other later game enemies. Is that also just, um, like something you picked up at random, or are you going by the enemy's level? How does that work? Uh, there, there's a couple different scalings. I believe it scales off of some combination of the enemy's HP and attack, uh, and maybe where they show up. I, I would oh, have to remember fancy. exactly how, but it, ha it has a way of ranking the enemies in difficulty and then uh, flurring them out. So Thomas has found Happy Happy Village. This is huge because stores are also randomized, and one of the stores is this free shop in Happy Happy Village where you can get in what the vanilla game is usually like six or seven dollar items. But since the shops are randomized and this counts as a shop, you could get all sorts of things here. Right now, it looks like bottle of waters are the best things on offer, which is still pretty good. That's 10 psychic points for Pooh, who as a caster, you know, loves uh, having those free psychic points available. So you can load up on bottles of water. In some seats though, however, you can get super bombs there. You could get multi-bottle rockets there in the free shop. And that really breaks those seats wide open if you get a lucky free shop. I noticed that you're calling it the free shop, but I'm pretty sure that's actually stealing. Oh, uh, it may be stealing. All right, so something big is happening here on Thomas's side. He's gone into this monkey cave area, and he's just given one of these monkeys a ruler. He's taking what we call an elevator or a skip. Whenever you have to move an NPC out of the way to get through a door, that is a skip. You're no longer following the linear progression of floor. Instead, you're taking an elevator to at least two floors away, maybe as many as five floors away. And I believe Andy just took a skip as well. With yeah, I just saw him a, use the eraser eraser. With the eraser eraser. So again, that's getting an NPC out of the way. So they're breaking out of the normal one to nine floor progression. So they've left floor two, they've gone at least two floors away. So they could be on floor four, five, six, or even seven right now. And they don't know where they are. They're going to have to try and determine that by the difficulty of the enemies around them or the things in the item boxes around them. Now, they could be in a bad situation here because these enemies are going to be way more powerful than their current level because they've broken out of the normal pathing. However, if they can beat a couple of these enemies, they can get a huge experience bonus and they can kind of establish themselves on one of these later floors. And that is the key to getting the extremely good times uh, in the Ancient Cave randomizer that both Andy and Thomas are capable of. Both of them are capable of sub-hour runs of this randomizer, uh, sub-50-minute runs. I think they've both done a sub-40-minute run of this randomizer. Um, That's incredible. Which is, yes, I mean, again, when I say, like, your first time on the Ancient Cave can take seven or eight hours for these guys to get sub-40 minutes, it's really powerful, and part of the way they do that is these skips. But again, they're extremely difficult because you're fighting enemies way above your level, and so you have to uh, be extremely good at the combat of Earthbound and have really good strategies and really fast mashing. Tom's um, found you... 
Go when you were talking about the um, ways that they determine what floor they're on, I believe that the music is also a hint for that. How does that work? Yeah, so each floor has its own consistent music track throughout the floor. So as you saw, floor one all had the same music track, floor two all had the same music track. So whatever music, whatever floor they're on, they now know the music for it. So if they come back to it later, they may be able to find uh, it out that way. There's also one other way you can know where you are for sure, and that's one of the hint man in the game. In the vanilla game, there's the hint man in Earthbound, who gives you little hints on where you should go next. We've repurposed the hitmen for the ancient cave, and they'll do two different things. They'll tell you, one, what floor you're on, so that's really helpful if you're coming out of a skip to know exactly where you are. And two, they'll tell you what the enemies are at the end of each floor. And that can be really important, because knowing what enemy you're going into can determine if you feel ready to take that encounter or not, given your current item loadout. One thing important is the most difficult enemy in the game is Carbon Dog Diamond Dog, who's also uh, the eighth sanctuary in Vanilla Earthbound. In about 37% of seeds, Carbon Dog Diamond Dog will be the boss for floor eight. So knowing whether Carbon Dog Diamond Dog is coming up can be uh, huge. And also knowing a couple other extremely difficult enemies can be important as well. I'm not surprised that Carbon Dog and Diamond Dog are up there on most difficult enemies, but I'm a little surprised it's not Ness's Nightmare. Um... N Ness's Nightmare is also very difficult, and he can be especially difficult because you can get him much lower, even as low as floor five. Uh, oh, so horrendous. knowing where he is, yeah, yeah and if you, if you run into him, like after taking a skip from one to five, and then immediately run into Ness's Nightmare, you have absolutely no hope. So knowing where Ness's Nightmare is can be big. And he got kind of a fake pull heel there. That's the uh, the uh, person at the bottom of the monkey cave. He revives your first three party members, but he does not revive Pooh because in the vanilla game, you don't have Pooh there. So the uh, coding of in the game in that particular area only revives your first three party members. I didn't know that. That's kind of trolly. And now yeah, I'm kind of curious whether or not I accidentally fixed that in PK Scramble. There's a few things like that where uh, what, what you... Uh, areas where you don't expect. One is in Magicant, uh, where you talk to mom and get a heal. That's actually a free full party heal as well, because uh, the game just runs the simple free full heal the whole party code. Uh, but that room doesn't run that code. A as I've you know, Tolmar that... is another uh, Earthbound randomizer developer. There's always three different ways that the Earthbound developers did things in the original code, so... Yeah, it's kind of like they didn't talk to each other when they were making this game or something. One of the ones that really gets me is I believe one of the Star Master heals cures mushroomization and the other one doesn't. It's just like, <laughs> why? Yeah, we, we've both hit some wild things while developing these randomizers. I, I know we've sh we've shared some horror stories over the over the months and years. Yeah, it's, so it's always amazing just how much this game appears to hold together when you're playing it normally and how much it doesn't if you do anything it doesn't expect. Let's talk about some of the other things that we're seeing uh, on this randomizer as we're going through. Oh, Something yeah. you you're almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So uh, we have sprite randomization on for NP NPC sprites. And additionally, we also have community created sprites in the Earthbound uh, Ancient Cave randomizer that you can put into the game. So uh, I believe Thomas is running Chu from Chulip. Mega Man, uh, Laika, a dog, and Mog, and Mog is currently dead, and it's got that dead uh, Final Fantasy VI character sprite. We that, had a um, bunch of dead FF6 character sprite is such a nice touch. Whoever made that sprite, like, great choice. We've had uh, a new person in the community by the name of Defcon1 who's been submitting a huge number of sprites recently. He's done Mario and Luigi, he's done uh, some FF6 characters, and there's more on the way. There's, I think, four more FF6 characters that I'm going to be adding this week. Uh, so huge shout out uh, to Defcon1 for all all their recent sprite contributions. Uh, and, and everyone, I believe there's been about 10 people who have submitted sprites over the years. Uh, you see Andy's using Tessie, uh, and Zelda, Bomberman, and I think Erdrick is his fifth, and Erdrick's dead, so we've got that uh, coffin sprite going behind him. Well, once again, I love the touch of having those custom dead sprites. Mm -hmm. We've got the uh, dragonized versions of the, the uh, Chosen Four. There, there's, there's a whole bunch of great stuff there. If you go to the uh, earthbound.app, the website, 
there's a little uh, box where you can click to expand to see all the sprites that people have made. Uh, and again, thanks to all of the spriters who have made and contributed those sprites to the randomizer. They bring a great touch. Something yeah, else you probably I really noticed. like how those random sprites, especially the character ones, just immediately let you know what game you're looking at. Like this is um, this is Earthbound Agent Cave. You know instantly yep. when you see Tessie in front. Yep, it's it's a little different. Tessie followed by Zelda followed by Erdrick. Yeah, it's uh, it's not your normal Earthbound. Uh, something else you probably noticed is the text is going extremely fast. Uh, this is something we've implemented in both of the randomizers, the instantaneous speed text. Uh, it, it's actually quite a game changer because as you may know, if you're familiar with Earthbound, as you see, when your players take damage, their HP will scroll down. And even if you take lethal damage, you can still take actions while your HP is scrolling down. So the instant text speed uh, changes a lot about how combat works. It makes a lot of fights more survivable, uh, but it also just lets us get through the game a lot faster. So. Uh, everyone yeah. in the community really uh, enjoys the instant text. So you'll be uh, seeing that in the second randomizer tonight as well. I believe um, we actually got someone playing uh, vanilla, except with, uh, in, uh, vanilla except with instant text and saved 30 minutes over the course of the game just from that alone. Yeah, so it's a lot. It really saves a lot. Thomas is broken into Central Onet. This is the biggest tub of the game, I believe, or is Tucson larger? Oh, man. I think it's on it, but I'm... Uh, you wouldn't better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I can I, I read the up. guide to this ages ago, and it was like, oh, yeah, these starting towns have tons and tons of doors. And then as you get later into the game, the devs are like, okay, we've done enough of this. We're sick of adding all of these extra little doors. <laughs> yeah, Central Onet has 18 different doors that he has to check to figure out which one of them is the right way forward. Or he may find uh, some more elevators here in Onet. But there are 18 different doors over Central Onet. It's the second most. Tucson has 19. And Central Onet has tons of those knocked doors. This is where people who are running the Ancient Cave for the first time, you will you can get lost in Central Onet for hours. Um, I noticed that the enemies that uh, Thomas is up against are very, very scary. Is he on floor like eight or nine or something? He may have taken another skip. I will check the spoiler real quick to see what floor... Central Annette is nine, so when uh, when we weren't looking, when we were talking about everything going on, Thomas has took another skip off of the skip he was on, and he is already on floor nine. He could wander into the Gygas room in any one of these doors, and he is by no means ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so apparently we need to start talking about what it takes to get ready for Gygas. What is that in this rando? Well, uh, in theory, any time you could fight Gygas and beat it, uh, you could. So you could just walk up to him and fight him and beat him. There's no flags or uh, anything blocking you from doing it. The problem is Gygus' attacks are going to kill you. So ideally, you want to find a sea pendant or a star pendant. Those are somewhat rare items in Vanilla Earthbound, but in the randomizer, they've been mixed in with all the other items into the potential item pool. So there may be one, two, three, or maybe zero sea or star pendants uh, somewhere in the floor seven, eight, nine category. Since they're extremely strong items, uh, they will be uh, in the later floors if they exist at all. But there's no guarantee that they exist. Also, it would be great to find a Franklin badge to reflect the lightning attacks of Gygus. Sea or star pendants will block 90% of the damage from freeze or fire attacks and also stop the uh, PK flash instant kill or paralyze attacks from Gygus, which are his biggest threats. So are, if you um, Franklin badges just in regular chests? Franklin badges are in regular chests. There can be zero, one, or two Franklin badges in regular chests. Plus, you can also find uh, Paula's shack in the cave. There's about a 20% chance Paula's shack will be in uh, the cave, and you can get another Franklin badge that way. So any given seed has a potential between zero and three Franklin badges. I see that uh, Thomas just picked up an earth pendant, which is halfway to a seed pendant. Yeah, that's good. So you, if you have a Franklin badge and a C or a star pendant on your prey character, they are almost invulnerable. And you only need your prey character alive in phase three to defeat Gygus. It's nine prayers to defeat Gygus, so your prayer character has to stay alive for those nine prayers to defeat Gygus. And if you have a Franklin badge and a C or star pendant, you're almost guaranteed to do it. You can get chunked down in very little percentages, but the odds are low. 
Yeah, However, it would be the one in four freeze plus solidify repeatedly before that would kill you off. Mm -hmm. However, there's again, there's no guarantee that you're going to find a C or star pendant or a Franklin badge. And the longer you spend looking, the longer your opponent can be catching up. So this is part of the game is how deep on floor nine or floor eight are you going to search for these items before you're ready to go for Gygas? Shiny are coins. Specific, so. Are there specific floors that would be the best ones to be looking for the pendants? Uh, the item boxes are stacked with... Uh, the better items are later in the maze. I'll, I'll put it that way. It's the easiest way to put it. So C or star pendants uh, or eight or nine are most likely to find them. Occasionally you'll find them on seven. I think I've seen one spoiler that had one on six, but they're going to be pretty late. However, um, the Franklin badges are distributed one early, one late. So those are done a little bit differently. Andy takes the photo opportunity, gets the uh, photo smiley face from the Tessie. I appreciate it, Andy. Nice. Is there um, anything they're looking for besides those defensive items? Those are the main things. Other things they can be looking for are better weapons for the uh, four characters, especially you want to look for a heavy bazooka for Jeff. That's infinite super bombs. It's extremely useful all the way in every fight, all the way to Gygas, because it's a guaranteed uh, 300 damage, I think. Uh, and otherwise, Jeff can be pretty useless depending on how the stats roll uh, because stat growth is also randomized. So you may see, you know, if, if you're used to vanilla Earthbound, you're used to Pooh having a whole lot of psychic points, um, but uh, you I'm may not, not necessarily get that. I'm not used to Paula having this much HP for sure. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice that Paula has a lot of HP. Unfortunately, um, Paula is the spy character in this seed, so that's not going to help her survive in the last... Well, it will help her survive in the Gygus fight, but it won't help you win because Paula is our spy character. Jeff has prey in this seed, so Jeff is our character we have to keep alive to the end of the game. Let's see if I can see what floor Andy is on. We know Thomas is on floor nine and he's taking some difficult fights. Again, he got into floor nine very early. He skipped uh, almost every fight except for the floor one boss. So he's really under leveled at this point. And this is part of the calculus you have to go to when you uh, go into these late floors. Uh, when you skip into these late floors is can you fight these or do you need to go back? Thomas takes a death and he has not saved once since the beginning of the game, so he is sent all the way back to the very first room, all the way back on floor one. Well, hopefully he remembers Woo. a quick route back where he was. Um, they have exit mice as a shortcut for that, don't they? Yes, so uh, Andy's checking the bad hole. Thank you, Andy, appreciate bad it. Hole. Uh, you can also talk to the face there to get a full heal. That's another one of the full heals. Uh, and Thomas gets a full heal here to revive his party. Let's see, did he set the exit mouse? He's going to go ahead and use this exit mouse and go. So we've reworked how the exit mouse works. In Vanilla Earthbound, the exit mouse takes you to the beginning of whatever dungeon you're in. Obviously, that doesn't make sense for the ancient cave. So instead, we've implemented the breadcrumbs feature from Mother 1 for the exit mouse. At any point in time, you can use the exit mouse and tell the exit mouse to mark your location. That exit mouse will then remember that location, and you can remark as many times as you want. Then later on, you can use the exit mouse and say, go to that marked location, and you'll be teleported to that location, and the exit mouse will be used up. Of course, if you find more exit mice, you can pick them up as usual. So, Thomas had set an exit mouse location, which was great because he hadn't saved, and he's exit moused himself back to what looks like back to floor nine based on that enemy. That's one of the more difficult enemies in the game. So that means that he's without an exit mouse now, right? If he takes another death, right? He is walk without back. an exit mouse. So if he takes another death, then he will have no choice but to walk all the way back from floor one and try and remember the path that he took to get here, which it's been, you know, dozens and dozens of rooms to get here. Yeah, that sounds a lot more dicey. Um, also, the path that he originally took here is probably not the fastest one to get here. So, like, can he figure out an even faster one if he has to make the trek all the way back? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's also just hoping for a phone to save would be ideal so that he doesn't have to worry about that. And oh, there is the Gygus room. So, uh, <laughs> since he has a call, I don't think that's what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, he hasn't put in his player name yet here, he gets the phone call from Tony to put in the player name. And I don't uh, think again, this is going to he... be a real name. <laughs> 
Did Andy find, or did Andy win? No, Thomas, we've barely gotten started. Andy's not on floor nine. You're the one on floor nine. I don't think he can hear us. No, but see, this is part of the thing when you're doing a race is because if you found this skip, it means your opponent could have found this skip also. And anything, you know, Andy could have found these exact same skips, but not taken that death and been way ahead right now. We know he didn't, but Thomas doesn't know that. He just knows that a skip all the way to floor nine is possible. And so now he kind of feels like he has to try it, even though he's somewhat underleveled and these fights are rather difficult. Yeah, that risk management side of racing randos is something I've always really liked. It kind of shows up in every rando, but this one definitely seems to have a lot more of it than most, because you really have no idea just how fast your opponent found these routes. Oh yeah, that's that's the really fun part of the tourney. We do a yearly tourney with uh, this randomizer. It's actually part of the uh, tournament series that the Earthbound speedrunners do. They do a, what they call a boogie percent tournament, which is the vanilla game up to boogie, uh, the boogie tent, which is about an hour, 10, hour, 20 minutes in. Uh, and that's a fun tournament. And then we also have done uh, for three years now an ancient cave tournament to go along with it. Uh, and of course, right now, the very first PK Scramble tournament is going on. Yeah, it's literally happening now. We have more matches tomorrow um, and some yesterday. It's been a busy week. See, uh, Risu pointing out in chat, any picking up some skip items in the Tucson department store. So we talked about the skips earlier, where if you move a monkey out of the way, you can skip onto a later floor. Some of the NPCs you can move out of the way for free, but most of them require items. Some items you'll find randomly in chests, but other items you can buy in the store, like a skip sandwich, um, wet towel, for instance. So. Since the shops are randomized, runners will often be checking those shops to see if they have any potential skip items and finding them. Andy just found the backside of a shiny spot. So the shiny spots are in the correct direction, so he knows he's on the beginning of whatever floor he's on, and you see him shake his fist in anger because he's backtracked to the beginning of this floor instead of finding the end of this floor, which was not what he wanted to do. Are there any like signals which direction around the floor is going as you walk through it? As you walk through it, no. Uh, the only signal is going to be if you can tell if the enemies are getting stronger or weaker, but there is a little bit of uh, randomness in that. The enemy distribution is on a little bit of a bell curve, so it's not something that's a 100% predictable. But you can kind of feel it out, and I've certainly, these runners are both high enough level that they certainly could feel out from the uh, direction the enemies are going and the gifts are going, whether they're going forward or backward. So Jeff pulled out a clutch battle there, but it does mean that Jeff is the only one alive as Thomas is searching out his way through the 18 doors of Central Annette on floor nine. So I have a strategy question for this. When you're like taking these huge skips into somewhere that you're not ready for yet, um, do you generally just try to cheese a win on something and get a foothold? Do you find somewhere you can actually do in bootstrap? Is there some sort of like contextual way that you would pick one of those? Sure. Well, what Thomas has found here, he's found the free full heal on floor nine, so that's huge, finding this. Uh, now he knows, even if he takes a death, if he finds a save nearby, if he can, you know, uh, despawn enemies and just do anything he can to get back to that door, he can get his full party back up. One of the toughest things to do is finding a save but not a full heal deep on a floor, so when you die and you come back as just nest with no psychic points, uh, then you're just in a really tough spot. Finding a free full heal anywhere gives you a huge advantage because even if it takes you a long time to walk back there despawning enemies all the way, well, you know where it is. So that's big. What I generally suggest to people is if they take a skip, the first thing they should try and do is get into a fight with only one enemy. Uh, there's different types of enemy groups around, but the worst thing you want to do is get into a fight with two enemies at once, two or more enemies at once, immediately after a skip. Because if it's only one enemy with the instant tech speed, you can usually mash out and use all your resources and mash real fast and usually get the one enemy defeated. And that will give you the big boost of experience to kind of give you a fighting chance on the floor. But if your first fight you take is two or more enemies, then the odds that you're going to be able to mash out that fight go down dramatically. That makes a lot of sense. Also, since PSI Freeze is one of the best abilities in the game at its single target, it also dovetails nicely into that strat. So I believe Thomas took a skip backwards. Yes, so he took a skip backwards. He knew he was on floor nine. I think he knew he was. 
Actually, I don't know if he knew he was on floor 9. I'm going to assume that he assumed he was on floor 9 based on the difficulty of the enemies, but he took a skip backwards anyway. He's now on floor 7 uh, in uh, Tucson. He doesn't know he's on floor 7, but I'm looking at the spoiler and I can tell you he's on floor 7. One of the reasons he might have skipped backwards is to have easier fights to build up experience and to search for items. As far as extremely good items, right now he only has an earth pendant. There's no chance that's good enough to fight Gygus with. So even though he knows, yeah, he did know he was on Florida because he found Gygus, right? So even though he knows where Gygus is, he knows that he has no chance in a Gygus fight right now. So he, and it's been difficult for him to search around Floor 9. So I think he's taken the skip back to 7 uh, to find some easier ways of getting experience and better items. So when he goes back to Floor 9, he'll have an easier time of it. And also maybe he'll find the items he needs here. Like I said, you could find a C pendant on uh, here on floor nine and both of these runners are good enough that if they get one C pendant they could take on Gygus with just one C pendant and that's very impressive um, you said that an earth pendant probably wouldn't be enough would earth pendant plus Franklin badge be enough or is it really just you need that C or star pendant to be able to pull it off both of these runners have done uh, have one seeds with just earth pendants I, I think they've won seeds with Earth Pendants and no Franklin Badge, even. Uh, those are extremely difficult fights, uh, and you would much rather... Uh, they also take a long time to do those fights. One of the nice things if you have Sea Star Pendants and Franklin Badges is the Gygus fight, in addition to being safe, it's also fast. Um, so, and of course, in a race, that's huge, both the safety and the speed. Uh, because when you take a death to Gygus, it not only takes time to fight him again, but it also takes a long time to get back from your save, to get another full heal, to go fight Gygus again. Uh, the Gygus fight itself is also very time consuming, so if you end up wiping very late in it, that's just a ton of time. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a balancing act of how deep do I search, because there are probably very good items around that will help out my Gygus fight. But A, there's no guarantee they're around, and B, the longer you spend searching, the more time your opponent can be winning the game. Andy in a difficult fight here. He's got two kids mushroom eyes, so that's confusion. So they'll be uh, firing off half their moves in the wrong direction as we see Jeff hits Paula there. Um, I think uh, mushroom eyes actually is less than half. Um, oh, is it less than half? Yeah, it's a 50% chance of doing whatever the regular Feeling Strange does. Okay, interesting. Yeah, when I learned that, I started taking Mushroom Eyes a lot less seriously. But I guess it's only 25% chance of hitting your party because, um... Yeah, probably, yeah. Feeling Strange is 50% chance of doing a random attack, I believe. I Man. think that's right. We, we've both delved so deep into Earthbound's code, and there's so much we don't know. Yeah, I, sometimes I was wondering whether the actual devs of the game knew what their mechanics did in some places. But um, Andy gets through that fight, uh, and he's onto another floor. I didn't see what uh, level boss that was, but he for sure did. So uh, maybe check the spoiler, or if anyone in chat happened to see what number shiny spot that was. Good job pulling that fight out, Andy. That was uh, the boss of floor five. So Andy is on to floor six. And as I said, Thomas has jumped back from floor nine to floor seven uh, for some easier fights and to look for items. Looks like Andy just found another skip. Um, so I know this is coming in from the backside of the monkey cave. Is that, does that mean you're generally going backwards or could it be oriented either way around? Uh, that could be either way around. So which direction you come in from the monkey cave doesn't matter whether the skips can go forward or backwards. Any skip can go forwards or backwards. It just has to be at least two floors away uh, and a maximum of five floors away. So this is a skip into a skip, so this could go literally anywhere. Uh, Andy is in magic camp. Okay, so this is nice. This is, again, there's a free full heal for the whole party here. So we go up and talk to mom, who is... Uh, a Hawkeye right now, but you know, you'll get that. It's Magic Ant. That's perfectly normal. And then check out Tessie's the. Uh, mom. That makes sense. Yeah, and Tessie's got some wonderful pajamas. Uh, friend the Kubliest really? who made the uh, Tessie sprite did an excellent job on that. Really appreciate that. Um, Is that a spirally thing at the end of Magic Ant? Just a regular old door? 
Uh, it is not anything at all, so there's no need to go all the way to the center. You might go into that spiral for the gifts, but uh, it's, it, as you may know in the coding, that's not actually a door, so it, it doesn't get included in the door shuffle. Yeah, I was wondering if you'd like special case to those weird door-like objects. No, not that one. Um, so Thomas defeating, going for these third strongest moles to get to the guests behind them, or a super mole deluxe, I guess they are, in this particular. Another thing you'll see is the background randomization. So the everyone uh, really enjoys the earthbound backgrounds, and we can put randomization on their palettes, on their scrolling behavior, on all sorts of interactions, and with all those randomized, uh, we get some really fun looking backgrounds. Uh, that's one of my favorite things, just seeing all the different backgrounds we get from all the different seeds. So the backgrounds really neat ones. Oh geez, I was just about to say how much I like the backgrounds on this, and I saw this one, which... Uh... Yeah, that's not the prettiest one. <laughs> not yeah. the best example while we're talking um, about how beautiful uh, some of the backgrounds can be, but you know... Yeah. The website has eh. different settings for how much you can randomize that sort of thing. Is this like turned all the way up? Right, we're, right now we're using our race randomization seats, so things can be more random than this. You can also just put on some of the random features uh, while not doing any of the Ancient Cave stuff if you just want to see some of the random stuff. Um, and at, at one point I was working on a little bit of an item randomizer, but uh, what you've done with PK Scramble is so far outclassed that uh, uh, I, I'm really glad you came uh, came to the community to, to step up and take the mantle of the item randomizer because what, you, oh, what you've you. done with it is fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be seeing yeah. that as soon as this race is done. We'll be seeing uh, Jade's Olmar's PK Scramble randomizer. Um, yeah, it's going to be really fun to be able to compare the two of these and commentate both of them with you. Because mm -hmm. um, they are very different beyond just being one ancient cave and one key item shuffle. Yeah, a lot of differences. Um, one thing is we've got the uh, window flavorings for the Ancient Cave randomizer are just uh, palette shifts. You see Andy's got this uh, kind of cute green <laughs> palette going on for his window colors. Uh, but for the PK Scramble, you've got some really fancy window colors, uh, basically entirely redone windows. Uh, yeah, there's a fancy little hack or uh, mod in there that will make it so that um, it can just have completely different graphics for each one of them. And we've had a couple people submit extra graphics for window borders now, so they can be really cool. I hope we have, like, really fun window border options for that seed yeah. when it comes up. Yeah, that'd be fun. So you see Andy went out into the spiral just to get the gifts, as we saw, and he's on his way back now, taking some green swirls. Um, yeah, going out to the spiral and picking up gifts is actually really popular in PK Scramble as well. For entirely oh, different reasons, I'm sure. out there. Okay, that well, can be huge. So the, very handy. Yeah, the Gutsy Bat uh, gives a whole bunch of guts, as the name implies, which can give lots of smash attacks, which means Andy's damage on Gygus may be significantly higher than Thomas's when we get there. This is the thing uh, a lot of people say, well, well, okay, not a lot of people. I've seen some people ask, it's the races just come down to who happens to get the skip to floor nine. Like Thomas found a skip to floor nine, so he's ahead, so he's just surely going to win, right? Well, not necessarily. Andy has this gutsy bat and it's on a floor back a bit, so Thomas is probably not going to find it. And if Thomas keeps struggling to find any items that are going to be relevant to the Gygus fight, Andy's got a much easier time now to catch up and then have a easier Gygus fight, which means a faster Gygus fight and also less odds of dying and having to redo the Gygus fight. Uh, so it's it's not at all a matter of, you know, get lucky and find the skip to 4-9 and you win. Yeah, you really need, like, a route to 4-9 and a coherent strategy to beat Gygus. And that requires so many different pieces that, you know, like, you could just luck into all of those, I'm sure. But more likely you're going to have to use your skill to get more of those lucky chances to be able to actually put something together that is coherent and gets you to the end of the game. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see which which route uh, takes it. And say, we saw Thomas say, you know, 4-9 wasn't giving him what he needed. He went and skipped back to 4-7 to uh, do some fights and look around for items. So there's a merchant here that could potentially have uh, super bombs. The shops are randomized, but they're not completely random. What they do is they have items that are similar in some way to the items they originally had. And that similarity is based on a, a number of different factors. But if you're looking for super bombs, in theory, any shop could have them, but you're more likely to find them at these sort of vendors who have explosives and that sort of things. 
So how does that work? Is that just like a list of tags for every item and it's like, oh, these are explosives, so replace an explosive uh, with an explosive, or...? It, it goes off of, so, some of it is similarity in price, some of it is similarity in what are found together with other items in the vanilla game. That's really interesting. Um, that sort of thing in PK Scramble I ended up being quite manual in how items are categorized. I'm impressed that you managed to do that more generically. And he found the backside of yet another floor that he skipped onto. You can see him shake his hand in frustration. He's, he's looking for forward, not backwards. Uh, Do you ever take those backwards um, shining sprites just for experience? Absolutely. There are different times that you would uh, do those. One is to find out what floor you're on. So if you're lost, you can just take it to find out what floor you're on. Two, if you know what floor you're on and you know it's an easy enemy, it's a great opportunity to take it for experience. And three, sometimes, like, let's say you've skipped onto floor nine and you're not finding anything, but you know the X side to the floor eight boss, you might take on the floor eight boss to get to floor eight to look for gifts around in floor eight. And the floor eight gifts may be nicer to you than the floor nine gifts. Are floors 8 and 9 about the same in terms of critical items, or are they, like, you should probably be looking on 8 or probably on 9? It's going to depend on the seed, uh, because the item boxes actually don't care what floor they on. They care how deep they are relative to all the other item boxes. So you may have a floor 9 that has a lot of item boxes, in which case it's probably going to have the good ones, or you may have a floor nine that has very few item boxes, in which case there's going to be more better items on floors seven and eight. And he's found the shiny spot. Is he going to take it? He's not sure if he... Oh, Thomas has found uh, what we, our, our version of the Hype Cave. There's a Franklin badge. That's huge. There's oh, a seat in it. That's huge. Uh, okay, so this is the room in Winters that has all the gifts in vanilla, they're cookies. In the Ancient Cave Randomizer, that is a huge room. And to find it on floor nine, and to find a Franklin badge on floor nine, the Franklin badges are almost never on floor nine because of the special distribution they get. So to no, find both a Franklin badge and a sea pendant in that room is gigantic. Um, but he is going to make the manly fish in the background very sad about opening all of Tony's presents. And he's found the 8th floor boss and it's Starman Deluxe. So it is, uh, and Thomas has found it as well, but from the backside. So they're right in the same area. They are fighting all those crazy different paths they took and they're fighting the exact same enemy at the same time. All right. Uh, pincer attack this boss. <laughs> That's true, it's a pincer attack. All right, Starman Deluxe is, uh, it's no Carbon Dog, Diamond Dog, but it's also not a pushover. It's got a lot of hit points, uh, and this is an enemy that if you are a vanilla runner, you just throw a multi-bottle rocket at it, and it's dead. So a lot of the vanilla runners who come into uh, Ancient Cave for the first time have a lot of difficulty dealing with Starman Deluxe and Carbon Dog, Diamond Dog, because your vanilla strategies of just throwing multi-bottle rocket at it are often not available because you cannot find multi-bottle rockets. Yeah, I definitely find these bosses that start with PSI shields and PSI power shields to be real roadblocks sometimes. Because you need to, like, you know, pick through that before you can actually do anything about the boss. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting. I've seen a lot of strategies for fighting uh, in Earthbound in the Ancient Cave that you don't see either in speedruns or in casual playthroughs. Because a lot of times in casual playthroughs, you're so highly leveled uh, that almost whatever you do doesn't matter against some enemies. Uh, and again, in speedruns, you know, they have the optimized strategies. But in Ancient Cave, you'll see a lot, we've seen a lot of strategies that you don't otherwise see. Uh, one common example is people will uh, try to confuse Diamond Dog uh, or Mirror Diamond Dog to get it to bite itself and diamondize itself and win the battle that way. Because Diamond Dog can also get often get a ridiculous amount of hit points, uh, and you can be underpowered when you fight it, but a diamondization of an enemy is an instant win. So if you can confuse Diamond Dog and it bites itself and diamondizes itself, you win. I didn't realize that enemies even could be diamondized. That's really cool. Yep. Uh, there's no visual graphic for it. They just kind of sit there, and the UN graphic comes up, and it's like, well, okay, I guess I won. <laughs> Good job, game. You didn't crash. That's a big it, Starman party over on Thomas's side. Yeah, this is part of why this fight is difficult, is this enemy can recruit uh, other enemies. So both are going to take a death to this. Andy is in a little bit of a tougher situation because he needs to get through this fight. Thomas doesn't. 
he could give up on this and just, you know, in theory, he, okay. So this is actually pretty huge. That spot right there uh, is a basically a fake save point. There's a couple of these in the Earthbound code. You don't actually save here, but if you die, you respawn here. Plus that uh, Star Master gives you a full heal. So that is a extremely fortunate place to find here on floor nine. So as long as he doesn't actually have to reset the game, he will respawn there. It does mean is he that... can't reset because then he won't come back there. But as is long as Master... he just... Sorry, is that Star Master permanent in this? Like, can you just keep using him over and over again? In this it is, yes, because the, uh, the flag of who going away never happens because you can't gain or lose party members in AC. Very interesting. So yeah, so that is, heal. That is a, very useful. A, per a stave and a full heal as long as you don't have to reset the console. So I'm still in a pretty good position. In theory, he could go for Gygus now. He has a C pendant and a Franklin badge, uh, so he could keep Jeff alive. The question is, how much damage can he put out? Can he get through Gygus phases one and two to get to Gygus phase three? Um, so normally you would just paralyze Pokey and then wail on them. Is paralysis always going to work in this? Uh, the odds of Paralyze succeeding <coughs> are usually the same, but they can be randomized. Additionally, the amount of damage on Poke, uh, the amount of hit points Pokey can have can be randomized, and whether Pokey is the big one is whether Pokey is weak to freeze can be randomized. Pokey could be 90% resistant to freeze. Uh, and if you don't, and they have not found super bombs, they have not found multi bottle rockets, they have not found a heavy bazooka. So they don't have ways of jamming out the damage, and Thomas especially does not have the gutsy bat, remember, that Andy found. Do you remember where Andy found that gutsy bat? Is it something that Thomas is likely I, to stumble upon? I believe it was here in Magic Camp, which means he is unlikely to stumble across it. But that's probably going to be a permanent advantage for Andy going forward, and, and put a potentially big way for Andy to catch up. Uh, as they try and figure out how they're going to defeat Gygus. Well, Andy still has to figure out how he's going to get to floor nine. But then once he does, as they both figure out how they're going to defeat Gygus, Andy with the Gutsy Bat will have the upper hand uh, if he can get there. So I noticed that Thomas picked up those defensive items a while ago and apparently, or presumably still remembers how to get to Gygus. Is there something that he should be looking for that would stop him from getting to Gygus? Or is he just on his way over there now? He can be looking for more see your start minutes. Right now, he would have to have the C pendant on Jeff because he would need to keep him alive in phase three. However, that means Jeff is probably not going to do any damage at all. He's probably going to be hitting for one HP. So his characters that can do damage and keep people alive in phases one and two have no protection against Gygus' attacks right now, I don't think. Uh, I think he has one earth pendant, so he can give 50% protection to one of his three uh, damage dealers or healers. In, in some situ it, it, a lot in a lot of ways, Jeff being the prey character is one of the worst situations if you don't find a uh, heavy bazooka, because if you do not find a heavy bazooka, a lot of the times Jeff is completely worthless in the Gygus fight, but you have to keep this worthless character alive. Uh, obviously, that's very different if you find a heavy bazooka, and he w goes from worthless to worth quite a lot. Um, is it only Paula, Jeff, and Pooh that can end up a prey, or can mess them up with it as well? Ness cannot, so the special abilities of Prey, Spy, and Mirror are shuffled between the three non-Ness characters. Uh, and additionally, since Mirror is pretty weak in the vanilla game, uh, there's a buff to Mirror, so any enemy can be mirrored. It's basically, uh, Mirror is one step more powerful for every enemy than it is in vanilla. I need to get around so to copying that from you. <laughs> so you can uh, mirror Gygus, <coughs> in theory. Um, and it uh, does not break the game, fortunately. I'm kind of amazed that Mirror doesn't break on some of these fights. Um, it's amazing how sturdy this game is in some places and not others. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly is. So let's see, did I uh, determine what floor Magic Ant was? So we know where Andy is. I think it's floor seven. I know that you said what it was, but I do not remember. No, it's floor eight, so Andy is on floor eight. 
So yeah, the because skips uh, must be a minimum of two floor away, Andy is not going to find a skip from eight to nine to get past Starman Deluxe. However, Thomas is not going to find a skip from nine to eight to get that gutsy back. He would have to beat Starman Deluxe or go back to seven and work up to eight, neither of which he's likely to do now that he's found a C Penda and a Franklin badge. He's probably just going to be working on seeing if there's another C or Star Pendant around, uh, hopefully multiple. Usually they're in a given seed. Uh, there can be between zero and three C Pendants and zero and three Star Pendants, which I believe averages <coughs> out to, a, in the average seed, 2.8 of those um, between the two of them. He's going for it. All right. Here we go. Oh, so I Thomas like that has Robo Moogle. <laughs> it's pretty good. Thomas has released a chicken, so that's important. Uh, always keep set those chickens free. There can be enemies in this Gygus room now. I think this this room was born for enemies. Uh, I I've actually gotten several comments from people playing my randomizer about how happy they are that there aren't enemies here. And for oh, the longest yes, time, I... I didn't know why they were thanking me for that. I, I get cursed at multiple times for people on their way to Gygus, uh, you know, hitting a uh, Ghost of Starman party right on the way and completely de derailing their Gygus fight. But there's all these little like side paths you can wander around, and it, it's perfect. I love seeing the enemies in this room. <laughs> so trolling. Um, those endgame enemies in this game are so awful, too. So let's see. He has a C pendant and the Franklin badge on Jeff. What was his other loadout? He's got some DX waters for Pooh. That's big. That's 40 psychic points each. And he's going to be relying on PK freeze from Pooh to uh, do a lot of that damage. Horn of life on Ness. That's a uh, revive item. Right, well, let's see what other it. defenses he has. Tolmar definitely put it in this room. It's great. I love seeing enemies in this room. I highly recommend it. All right, I think we're gonna have to put it up to a poll. Who would like them? Yeah, who would like there to be enemies in this room in Piggy Scramble? One other fun little random thing we have is Pokey gets some random dialogue here. We've got a pool of. Uh, he could get a line from any any line from any character in Earthbound, and also a pool of about uh, forty other fun little quotes that Pokey King, speeches Pokey can give whenever he has a fight. And so we are into the Gygus fight, so it's pretty uh, straightforward. funny looking Gygus fight you've got there, so. <laughs> so he's going for the paralysis attempt with Ness, putting up the shield with Paula. The initial <coughs> attack from Gygus is an alpha. That's great news because Jeff could have been taken out straight away by a beta. The paralysis attempt does not work, so Pokey's going to get in a hit on this next go. This is some um, very appropriately tense music for this fight. Mortal damage to Paula from the attack from Pokey. Here's the freeze. How much damage does it do? 17. Let's okay. Okay. You were just warning about. I was I just talking about this. This Pokey is 90% resistant to freeze. Um, the so. This is not sticking either. This is very nasty. Well, the paralysis, the paralysis is still likely a 50%. Uh, it, it's unlikely that this one... I mean, it's certainly possible it's worse. Uh, he could spy. Well, he can't spy now because Paula is dead. But this is going to be rough. Uh, this Pokey is freeze-resistant, and I don't know what other damage dealing... No, he, he might be par paralysis-resistant, too. Paralysis this is a lot of failures. We will only know for sure... We'll only know for sure if he spies, um, because uh, we've also improved spy to give you percentages for uh, all the different uh, weaknesses that it could have. Oh, that's a very nice improvement. Uh, so if he spies, we will find out uh, how paralysis resistant it is. Uh, going for brain shocking Gygus in phase one is a very risky strat. Yeah, it, it's a, it's so brain shocking Gygus means that Gygus is attack has a 50% chance to target himself and Pokey. And if he does that, it will reflect off of Gygus and will hit a party member, and the shield from Paula will not stop it. However, it's, it like it's going to be wipe. one of the best ways to deal damage to Pokey in this fight, uh, because the freeze is not working and he does not have anything powerful for either Ness or Jeff. So this is going to be a tough Gygus fight. 
Yeah, this is very tricky. Do you think he's gonna be diving in immediately and doing another attempt at that now that he knows that reason paralysis aren't working? Or do you think he's going to go look for more stuff? I don't think so. I, well, in his shoes, I would keep searching. I, I don't know how thoroughly he has searched this floor. How, how, what he thinks the odds are that he'll find something more useful. Now, here's big on Andy's side. While we were watching that fight, Andy took down that Starman Deluxe, so the path to floor nine is open for Andy. He's going to go back for a full heal here since he lost two party members, but then he's going to be on to floor nine. And as we remember, that room with all the gifts in it is pretty close to the entrance of floor nine, so Andy's going to find that. Hopefully, Andy's going to find that. You know, it, it is a door randomizer. He might not take the right door, but assuming Andy finds that, he's going to be equivalent to Thomas and a little bit ahead because he has that gutsy bat and as we saw with Thomas on that Gigas fight damage dealing is going to be a problem in phase one and Andy has the gutsy bat and that is a reliable way to deal damage that Thomas does not have. That's a very neat situation that we've ended up in here. Um, just as you were talking about the amount of stuff that you pick up on the way matters just as much as being able to actually find Gigas quickly. And Andy hits the right door. He's going to see the Franklin badge and the C pendant. <laughs> and that's, yeah, he saw those all right. And a piggy job. Now, I don't believe we've seen any vendors for super bombs or uh, multi bottle rockets. But when you have a freeze resistant pokey, is plan one find a multi bomb vendor, or sorry, a super bomb vendor find a multi-bottle rocket vendor, although you do need a uh, rabbit's foot for that to be really good, and you have to get lucky and find a rabbit's foot, or Are find multi a bazooka. Are yeah, multi-bottle rocket vendors very common in this? Um, it's going to depend on the seed. I've, there are seeds where they're all over the place, and there are seeds where they don't exist at all. I would say I your average seed your average seed, ju just trying to think statistically of all the seeds I've seen. Oh, pizza shop, that's important. Let me come back to that. Of all the seeds I've seen, I'd say a little more than half don't have multi-bottle rockets, but somewhat more than half do have super bombs. Now, that pizza vendor could be huge for this fight because he can order large pizzas. Large pizza is a food item that heals the entire party. It only heals poo for six, but it heals the other three kids for... 150 some I think so starting out the Gigas fight with large pizzas could be a huge way to get through in this fight where he's going to need a lot of help yeah, those large pizzas also if everyone's about to die it'll heal everyone and because of the rolling HP you can usually get that in there we have the pocky the pokey knocking background music for this floor well that's kind of rough so sorry about that <laughs> on your on your ears but yeah that that is the music for this floor Just think of it as Gygus knocking on the door, in inviting our runners to come defeat him. Uh, Pokey's back there. It makes sense to me. Again, Thomas checking these vendors, hoping for super bombs. Not finding any. So we are both on floor nine. Andy needs to find Gygus. Thomas needs some better way of dealing damage to Pokey. Has he found this heal before, or is this new for him? Um, he's found a heat pull heal on floor nine. I don't know that he's found this one. Yeah, I don't remember seeing the people like over yet. But I think there are three full heals on floor nine in this seed, which is nice. Oh, that's interesting. I kind of assumed that there would be one per floor. There's one guaranteed per floor, um, but there are a couple more that get randomly distributed. Oh, interesting. And they just happen to end up here on floor nine. So is that full heal guarantee including like NPC full heals, or is it like the, the sanctuary ones? There's seven sanctuaries and the throne room and the uh, brick road room. Uh, oh, interesting. The dungeon, said, the top of dungeon man are the nine said, guaranteed full heals. You said seven sanctuaries. Which one's missing? Is it Lumine Hall? Yes, uh, Lumine Hall is not in the ancient cave because, as you know, there's some funky code stuff going on in that room. 
Oh yeah, I can um, help you out with that. Remind me after this. <laughs> so I think Thomas is gonna skip onto an early floor. Again, he's looking for ways to deal damage. The super bomb vendor could be on any floor, so he may be looking for super bomb vendors. He's gonna check this hint man. This is the third floor. Oh, there was Ness's nightmare on floor four. That is a oh, super God. early Ness's nightmare. Holy I'm cow. Always a fan of Ness's nightmare. Oh, that is a brutally early Ness's nightmare. They're, he's, they're both going to be so glad they skipped that. Absolutely. So again, if you're joining us late, this is the Earthbound Ancient Cave randomizer. All the rooms of Earthbound have been mixed up, the plot's been ripped out, and there are nine floors that our runners have to walk through and find Gygus and defeat him. Uh, Thomas already knows where Gygus is. Andy is on floor nine, just looking for Gygus. But they're both going to have some trouble winning this fight because Pokey is freeze resistant and they don't have a lot of ways of dealing damage right now. So another thing they're looking for is ways to output damage and actually win this Gygus fight. I see a question in chat on what is a nightmare? That is Ness's nightmare, one of the final bosses of the game. Normally you would face Ness's nightmare very, very near the end of the game with just Ness. So it's kind of questionable where you would actually put it because you have this full party. And it looks like Chaz, being somewhat evil, decided that midway through the game is the right compromise there. So they're all just it, very glad that they didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> it's actually a, a, a pretty late uh, enemy. It just, uh, the way the rolls happen, sometimes he can get put pretty early. Four is the absolute earliest he can get put. You, you have to uh, get pretty unlucky on some rolls to see him on floor four. But uh, as you can see, it's possible. Yeah, that is very, very mean. Oh, I see, uh, is that Starman Jr. or is that just a regular Starman? That's just a regular Starman. So Thomas is all the way back on some early floors looking for, uh, I'd say, primarily looking for some super bombs. But any way to deal damage to Pokey. Andy is looking for Gygus. Uh, so something I should mention about the Earthbound Ancient Cave randomizer is uh, I'm not the one who came up with the initial idea. The Earthbound speedrunning community commissioned Abyssinem, who's made, oh, a couple dozen randomizers, I think, uh, to make a randomizer for Earthbound. Um, the Earthbound randomizer story, actually, there was initially a randomizer for Earthbound by Tomato. Uh, that's Clyde Mandolin, the person who did the fan translation of the Mother 3. Uh, that's the he did early... That's the earliest rando that I know of, too. Like it's it, way it's before this revitalization of the genre. Yeah, it was one one of the earliest randomizers created uh, in in like the first year of randomizers, uh, along with uh, Artemis's uh, Pokemon Emerald randomizer. It was in that era. Tomato created the uh, what is it? Earthbound Reshuffler is what they called that. Uh, and it was just kind of a chaotic, they had a door randomizer where the, the game wasn't really completable and the sprites were all mixed up and it, it was uh, it was more of a, a fun tech demo than a uh, game that you could complete. Yeah, and I the remember when that came played. out, when that came out, the door rando, it was just like, don't use this on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the community was having some fun with that, but, uh, you know, they're, they're speedrunners. They wanted a game uh, randomizer that they could complete uh, and compete with. Uh, so they commissioned Abyssinem, who made the very first version of the Ancient Cave. So the concept of the nine floors of the dungeon with all the rooms uh, broken apart and restitched together was his concept. Uh, but, you know, he moved on to other things. Uh, but I, I've been a member of the Earthbound uh, scene for a while, and I had a uh, large interest in it. So I kind of took over it and rewrote it and added to it and... Uh, just snowballed it into the giant thing that it uh, has turned into. Yeah, so, I think... huge thanks both to Abyssinem for the original version of the uh, Ancient Cave and to Tomato, who uh, we still see some of uh, his work. Uh, I asked for permission to use his random names for the enemies, for instance. Uh, so, those are... Uh, we, we still have some DNA from the original Earthbound Reshuffler in this. Those random names are really good, too. So I really like that splitting everything up into nine sections with floors. That helps a lot with just how much of a mess these um, like full door randos can end up being to figure out. But I'm wondering, oh, yeah. is that skip system your addition to it? Uh, the skip system was 
sort of an accidental thing from Abyss Nim's original creation. It, it wasn't uh, intended in, in the original design, um, but it was kind of a fun emergent gameplay we found while testing the first couple beta versions that he made. Uh, and so as I redeveloped and uh, rewrote it, we kept it and improved it so it was more consistent. Uh, and, you know, we had a couple discussions about whether it was a good idea or a bad idea, and we decided that the, uh, the community liked the gameplay and outplaying elements that it could provide. Yeah, I really like, like how you formalized it with that at least two floors and all of that sort of stuff. It really makes the competitive side of this like stick together nicely. Yeah, I think the result that we are at, you know, it's taken a lot of years of iteration uh, and uh, lots of community feedback. But I think the result we are in has led to some really fun tournaments and matches. Yeah, these can be a lot of fun to watch um, if you can follow them. Um, well, even if you can't follow them, they're a ton of fun to watch. And Andy has found Gygus. Andy has found Gygus, so we'll see what name he puts in. I don't think that's an actual name. <laughs> so Andy does not yet know if that guy guess is freeze resistant. Or sorry, Pokey phase one is freeze resistant. So he's almost certainly going to go for this. Um, <laughs> that said, <laughs> greetings from Germany. I like with this the choice with the gutsy bat and Andy is more likely to do the phase one Gigas brain shock strategy. He's going to go ahead and mark his mouse here, by the way. So if he takes death, he can come right back here. Makes a lot of sense. I think he's going to go for this. Uh, no, he's going to go back. Uh, maybe find a save uh, and then exit mouse there. That way, if he does die, he can reset to his save and he'll still have the exit mouse. Uh, and he can basically initiate a Gygus fight right away. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And he has to save so that the marking is, like, actually sticks. Correct. So here, Thomas is going for the large pizza strats. So this is a little hack. Normally it takes three minutes of in-game time before the pizza man will come when you call for him. However, you can save and reset and reload the game, and it will speed up the pizza man's arrival time. How would that work if I was gonna try that in real life? Uh, after you call the pizza man, if you save and reset real life, that would, uh, I don't know if that would speed up you getting your pizza or not. Mm, we're gonna have, have to, to try to test that. that. Would have to test that to be sure. So Thomas has the large pizza. That will be really helpful for the Gygus fight whenever he feels ready to attempt it. What is Andy looking for? Is he looking for more items or is he just looking for a phone? Looks like he's retracing his steps a bit, so I think probably looking for a phone or healing spot that he's seen before. Thomas has found all these doors in Scraba. He's really hoping for a bomb, a super bomb, but uh, these vendors are unlikely to have one. He's going to check, because uh, what else can you do but check? That makes sense. Um, I think Andy's looking for like a specific phone that he's found that was near a heal spot. I don't think there's a phone outside in Magicant. Like one inside, but of course the outside yeah. of Magicant doesn't connect to the inside of Magicant in Ancient Cave. Of course. Oh no, he's going back, so it just was that heal, not a phone. Well, I'm sure he's looking for a save since he's marked, um, marked the mouse. If he was just going for the fight, he would uh, take the mouse now. Now, there's where he could pick up another mouse. That's interesting. Um, there's a phone. Oh, there is okay. a phone right here. Okay. Yeah, so I think he must have remembered that this phone was near the Magic Ant heal, and that's like a nice walk back from here to the heal, use the exit mouse, do another Gygus attempt. All right, so he's going to organize his inventory and get ready for this Gygus fight. C pendant on to Jeff. Drop the sign banana. That's uh, one of those skip items, so it's not going to be helpful okay. anymore. You can drop the signed banana in this? Yes, uh, you can drop any item in this. This sounds very dangerous. Um, I believe you also <laughs> have a, uh, a quick drop button that is yeah. also very dangerous. Yeah, if you've heard the little pew sound at any point in time, that was the runner hitting the R button and instantly dropping whatever item they picked up last. 
So do be careful around that button, but it is available. From the way that people have told it, accidentally dropping the gutsy bat or a sea pen is a rite of passage for people who play this rando. <laughs> yeah, you'll be careful around that vine after the uh, first time. Alright, looks like Andy is getting ready to do that Gygus move. I didn't comment it on at the time, but it looks like Andy at some point found the auto star master. Since we've ripped out all of the storyline elements, we've ripped out the parts where you, where Pooh learns PSI star storm. So to compensate for that, we have two items, uh, up to two items in the game that are called auto star masters. You could just find those in a chest and you just use those and Pooh learns star storm. So Andy found one of those. And so his Pooh knows star storm alpha. And that's big because star storm there's no defense against Starstorm. Pokey can't be any percent resistant to Starstorm. Uh, so that's another guaranteed way of dealing damage that he'll have. And of course, Starstorm is a full party attack, so if he does it, he does use it in phase one, it will bounce off of Gygus, but it is a way of dealing damage in this phase one, which as soon as he fires off a freeze and sees it only does 17 damage, he's going to be thinking of ways that he can do damage, and that's going to be a big one. He also has that Gutsy Bat, so he has yep, many the Gutsy Bat's ways. going to be huge. I also saw a Mummy Wrap in there, so yet more ways to get in some good damage. Yep, Mummy Wrap will do it. Um, the very first PK Scramble Seed that a actual runner ran was a, uh, or really XC, common runner of this, and he imported Mummy Wrap straps that I didn't know about and just cheesed everything with them. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so again, no Paralyze on Pokey. I, I do suspect it's uh, resistant. Yeah, it's looking more and more like that. What is the chance that a paralysis would get added to Pokey? Uh, it, the, the way it's coded, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it <laughs> it's sounds the like my way to answer though. that. All right, so he's seen that Freeze is not doing much. So let's see uh, how many times he's going to try for this Paralyze before he goes to just start attacking and what other strategies he's going to go for. Yeah, he really needs to stop trying that Paralysis because Ness has the Gutsy Pad. Well, maybe he didn't see that Freeze isn't doing much because he's fired off another Freeze. Um, could also just be trying for his stun lock. Um, even if something's fully Freeze resistant, you can just keep spamming it until it's solidified. It's possible. Uh, I, I would say this particular combination of Pokey, it's extremely likely that you're going to take a death to it the first time because it is a difficult Pokey. Um, so he's also going for the Brain Shock strats here again. Uh, well, for the first time. But we saw Thomas did this, but Thomas was already almost dead when he did this. So again, Gygus is going to target the uh, enemy team, which will deal damage to Pokey and also bounce off of Gygus through the shield and do damage to an enemy. But Andy has good menuing and the Texas instant speed, so he can fire off the life ups to keep the party alive. Yeah, and all of his characters are still fairly high health and have lots of time to sneak that in there. Mm. Now, this is going to be a tough phase <coughs> one, uh, but Andy is extremely good vanilla earth round runner and an extremely good ancient cave runner. So I think he can pull this off. It's going to be tough, though. This is. Uh, if this was your first seed, this would be a gigantic roadblock. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if many people uh, not be able to complete the seed if this was their first one. This is a tough fight. Yeah, I think my first seed had a uh, freeze resistant but not paralysis resistant Pokey, and it was mean. So I see Andy has a secret herb, so it doesn't matter that Jeff is dead right now. He can revive him, well, he can probably revive him later. Secret herb, 75% chance to revive. He's contemplating his, option, his options. Well, let's keep trying the paralysis for now while we put up another shield. That Pokey must have a lot of health. Well, he generally does, yeah. These, uh, the enemies on the end of the bell curve can uh, have some unusual things happen to them in the randomizer. Um, so would you be expecting this Pokey to have more health than vanilla on average? Hmm, on average... 
because of the fact that it could get its HP shuffled with other enemies like it, which mainly means Gygus, uh, I, I would say maybe 60% of the time it'll have more HP. This is very mean. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. So now Andy knows what he's up against, but he has an excellent save position. His save position is much better than Thomas's. Yeah. Also notice that Eaton Bard. Very nice. Yeah, menu the, screen uh, menus. the the screen menus did uh, did change a little bit there. So he's going to reevaluate his item loadout based on what he knows now about this phase one. See if there's anything he wants to change. He was thinking. Yeah. And I believe he also has to. Oh wait, he reset, so he doesn't need to go for a heal. Well, and the other thing is he knows this is difficult, so he he knows that Thomas is having a rough time too, right? So, yeah, and I think his loadout's good enough that just repeatedly bashing your head against it is probably faster than trying to find something that could actually fix this. So looking at the spoiler, I will say that there is not a, uh, a heavy bazooka in this maze. So looking around for that won't help. There are three star pendants on... Uh, Floor nine. They're in the mole cave, which we haven't seen, I don't think. The main mole cave room. They're all in the main mole cave room. They're all in the main mole cave room. But that That's won't something. that won't help with phase one. The seer star pendants don't help with phase one. Phase one is just just a, a damage problem. And yeah. the way this pokey is arranged and the way the items in the cave uh, have come, it's kind of been a tricky damage problem. Yeah, it's been looking very difficult for both of them. Let's say if they can get past phase one, then with a star with a C pendant and a Franklin badge on the prey character, you can pray your way through phase two. It might take a while, but you can do it. Phase one is the roadblock. Phase two will be easier and phase three will be a cake. That's kind of funny using prey to get through phase two, given that that's you know, normally, phase three onwards would be how you would do it. Mm hmm All right. Andy knows what he's up against now. How's he going to do it? He's just starting off with the bash. He's not even trying for the paralysis. Mummy wrapping pokey. Good call. Another alpha from Gygus. That's good news. Everyone will stay alive. So this mummy wrap is a guaranteed solidify, and Pokey takes a turn, he takes one turn where he does not do, does do damage, and one turn where he does damage. And this will solidify him through his first damage dealing turn. So Pokey's going to skip his damage dealing turn, and he's going to take another turn where he doesn't deal damage. So that looks like mummy wrap... Done. Looks like he's also going for that brain shock strat, so... Yep, going for the brain shock strat, so that... Sequencing that mummy wrap correctly there so that you, you take away Pokey's damage dealing phase is big. Thomas also going in for Gygus again. He's basically didn't find anything uh, helpful uh, during all that searching uh, since his last attempt at Gygus. He's really not in that different of a situation, unfortunately. He does have that Casey bat if he just wants to get lucky and get through. Well, I, I'm not sure. Uh, the Gutsy Bat with the smash attacks are going to help out a lot. The Casey Bat's not going to do any smashing, so I think the Legendary Bat is uh, going to do more damage over time. Uh, I didn't notice that he had the Legendary Bat yet. Yeah, that is probably strictly better than Casey. You see Andy quickly firing off an auto uh, round just to get the life up off. That yeah. is a strategy you can employ if you need to get a life up off quickly. You just put your team on auto and they will do the life up that they need to do. With the instant tech speed, it works really, really well too, because it's yep. very, very fast to do that. Though this is like the one fight you really don't want to have to do that on. Yeah, it's rough. I'm gonna try and auto again to save Jeff, does not get it off. So he's in a rough situation again here. Yeah, we have some kids dropping already. See what strategy Thomas takes on his next attempt at Gygus. He's going to try for the paralysis. Starting with a big bottle rocket and large pizza for the full heal. Or sorry, for the uh, full party HP recovery. 
Big bottle rocket, not enough speed on Jeff, so all the big bottle rocket pieces miss. That is a shame. And those paralysis aren't landing, though I imagine it can't go down to 100% miss chance on that, right? It's probably just like 5% chance of working. Um, I think so. Man, it's... <laughs> yeah, Earth by mechanics. Uh, they're, they're rough. Yeah, I can imagine just um, trying that until it sticks, maybe. Um, just Andy had... it runs it this fast. Mm -hmm. Andy has a secret herb here. I think what he's thinking about doing is just trying to bash out this fight uh, as quick as he can. Oh, no. Ooh, he got it, but he's going to roll down by four. Yeah, that's he, he got through phase one, but there's lethal on this here. Well, that is the furthest either of them have gotten so far. Um, hopefully he'll have better luck next time through here. We do have the uh, next run that we do want to do, so we may uh, see if Andy can get through Gygus on this next one, uh, and if then just uh, in the interest of time, we might have to move to the other randomizer. But uh, I, I think Andy's going to want to try this again, because he has a strategy that will work. He can get yeah. through phase one. Yeah, I'm hoping one of them gets through. I'd like to see a win here. I mean, Dom's strategy can work here as well. He's also going for the uh, the brain shock strats, and he's going for fire. So fire's doing 77. So at least Paula is doing something there. Uh, Paula doesn't need to shield as often when you're brain shocking because 50% uh, of the Gygus attacks aren't hitting you and they aren't reducing your shield. So Paula doesn't need to spend this much time shielding. Yeah, and having one kid get randomly hit by that isn't as bad as uh, all of them, as you would Right, especially with the instant tech speed, because you can heal a lot. And if you get lucky, both Ness and Paula have a fairly good reservoir of HP. So if they're hitting Ness or Paula, then they're okay. And they both have full heal, so if Jeff goes down during phase one, it's not a problem. They can get Jeff back. Yeah, I see um, Thomas's poo is still using freeze and everything. Um, do you think he's that's just the most damage that Pooh can do in this setup, or is it going for the solidify? Let me see what Pooh has. Um... <coughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot else that Thomas's poo can do because he doesn't have the uh, the star storm that Andy's poo does. Uh, that makes sense. And of course, you don't want to be going for Thunder in this fight. Ooh, Andy got the Paralysis, so it must just be like a 10% chance. Oh, that's huge. Um, Pokey is most oh, of the yeah. damage output in this fight, because you can shield Oh yeah, that's does. huge. Oh my goodness. All right, I think that's going to get him through here. I Yeah, I feel good about this phase one now, because we saw all of the good strategies. You know, Andy's got some great strategies for this, for difficult fights, and now that he's actually got the Paralysis on Pokey, He's yeah. going to take it slow. He's going to take his time because he doesn't want to mess this up. Because, again, that, I'm going to guess that that's a 10% paralysis chance on Pokey right now. And he got yeah. it. So, he, you know, there's no guarantee that he can get it again. So he doesn't want to mess this up. So he's going to take it slow and careful. 457 from that smash. All that right. Pokey this has is a looking lot of good. HP. I just noticed that both of them have their favorite thing listed as the other. That is super cute. Yeah, I was, a lot of runners will do that in the tournament. Uh, there, there's a lot of respect from everyone uh, who has to put up with the uh, the seats that my creation has, has put out upon them. Uh, well, the the tournaments, the, the Earthbound Speedrunning community is a great community, and, and the, t the tournaments especially uh, are a fantastic time. Yeah, I've been blown away with just how kind everyone in this community has been. Yeah, I, my, I myself am not a speedrunner, so I, I came into this uh, from the from the PK hacking scene. Uh, something I should mention, not only are the previous randomizer developers we've worked on, but for over 20 years, uh, people from Sarman.net and various other communities have been what we call the PK hack scene. Thomas got through phase one. 
Oh, good Excellent. job, Thomas. And that's a weird looking guy, guys. They're both through phase one at the same time. Oh my goodness. This fight's getting intense. Okay, I was just gonna say thanks to everyone over the past 20 years who's been working on hacking Earthbound. We're all standing on your shoulders to build these two randomizers in many ways. Oh, absolutely. Into, on to phase two. So this is where um, the freeze attacks and the fire attacks and the lightning attacks and the flash attacks are going to come in. And since there aren't a lot of pendants around, they're going to need to get Jeff alive ASAP because Jeff can look <coughs> through all of those attacks. And Jeff can pray. One of the things that Frey can do is revive all the other party members, and it can also deal damage. So this phase two may take a long time, but if they can get Jeff alive, does Thomas have a way to get Jeff alive? And he doesn't have a way to get Jeff alive, then he doesn't have a way to win this fight either. Oh no. Did the, did the, did it not work? He had, he had a, uh, didn't he have a, uh, sorry, the 75% chance to revive item? Uh, secret herb? Um, yeah, I did not see what was in his inventory, but if you only had one secret herb, then that could be a problem. Oh, was it on Pooh, and Pooh got flash killed right away in phase two? Oh, that's awful. Yeah, that is very rough. Right, we're gonna have to no, hope that Andy all gets that a pin. to get into it. So this is, this is why those uh, pendants are so important, because, because one of the things that the PK flash attack, it's not actually PK flash, but a PK flash-like attack from Gygus can do is just an instant kill. Uh, it just like, it says, hey, you, you're dead. And if you do not have a CR star pendant, then you are dead. Um, yeah. Or an earth pendant. I think, uh, calling it PK flash, I think calling it PK flash makes plenty of sense. It is exactly the same code as PK flash gamma. Mm -hmm. And doing that <coughs> right away on Pooh, who had the opportunity to revive Jeff. Because like I said, if Jeff's alive in this phase, you're going to get through it eventually. It might take a while, but Jeff has the C pendant and the Franklin badge. The prayers are going to get there eventually, because they're going to revive your other party members who are going to be able to do damage. They're going to keep Jeff's hit points high enough that the eight or nine that Gygus can do per freeze isn't going to do anything. The lightnings are going to reflect off of the Franklin badge and do damage to Gygus. It does look like Andy is having a much more stable time of this. Um, doesn't look like he's yeah. in too much danger yet. Yeah, basically, the only thing that can get Andy here, and he's through phase two, so the only thing that could have got him there was if, while he was doing damage with one of his attackers, Gygus first confused them, and then the confusion attack meant that his own character attacked Jeff and did damage to him uh, in a way that he, uh, Jeff, couldn't prevent. And also, Andy, didn't, wouldn't be able to get off the life up on Jeff in time. That would have been the only way that Gygus could have gotten uh, him in phase two. In phase three, uh, again, the only way that this can go south is if we just get a ton of freezes on uh, Jeff and Jeff loses. Um, it's extremely unlikely. Yeah, it would have to be all freezes and several of them being solidifies. We are probably in the clear, just nine prayers away. I guess eight now. So what else do we need to talk about? Uh, if there's any more questions about the uh, Earthbound Randomizer uh, for Ancient Cave, I can try and answer them. Um, while we're while Andy's powering his way here through phase three, as we see a little uh, green floaty Gygus background, that's some of that fun background randomization that I was talking about earlier. I have one. Uh, how much familiarity do you need to have with the vanilla Earthbound game in order to play the Ancient Cave randomizer? Well, okay. Uh, no matter your familiarity uh, with Earthbound, your first Ancient Cave randomizer is going to be rough. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be something in the order of seven or eight hours. If uh, you remember Earthbound, I would give it a playthrough or two, uh, or even just one, or even just like a few times to get re-familiarized with the mechanics. Um, but ultimately, you can learn what you need to do from the Earthbound Ancient Cave randomizer by playing it. And since all of the storyline elements are ripped out, you don't have to remember like, 
what goes where or what key item is what, because fundamentally you just have to walk to Gygus and beat him. And I would do it over your first one, I would do over multiple playthroughs, like save and turn it off and, and come back to it another day. Additionally, on the website, when you create a seed, you can also create a spoiler file. Uh, and there's a mapping website you can go to and you put that spoiler file into it and it gives you the map and it tells you like what the right door is to go to to go right to the end from anywhere where you are and where the important items are. So I would use that your first time to try and help you make sense. And we also have a tips document that has a whole bunch of helpful ways to get through the cave uh, for your first time. Another thing I'd recommend is if you're doing your first ancient cave, grab a friend, both of you grab the same seed, talk to your friend, make it a little bit more cooperative. Um, that's how I did my first run of this. We got through it in like five hours, which is less than seven. Um, and it's a lot of fun to like share that with someone else. Yeah, that's time for Andy. Uh, he has GG Andy. Congratulations, Andy, perfect. Hey, Andy, congratulations. That was a rough one. That was, it might have been the most difficult Gygus I've ever encountered in, in this game, or in this randomizer. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly the roughest Gygus when you have a C and a Franklin badge, I would say, that I've seen. Oh, absolutely. I, I, did, a, seen I did a seed last night in, in, during practice, or maybe it was the night before, and where I discovered that brain shocking Gygus was a decent way to put out damage on Gygus if you are in a bad situation. And had I not done that seed, I probably wouldn't have zero chance getting through this one. <laughs> Did the same thing, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it was a good strategy. I, I, you both got through uh, phase one uh, on your last fight at exactly the same time. Wow. Uh, oh, really? But, yeah, but then uh, uh, I guess uh, decided to instant kill Pooh, who had the revive item for uh, Jeff. Oh, on yep. side. Bummer. So I was like, it's, oh, it's man, this is going to be a real good race. And then Gagas <laughs> just said, eh, no, nope, who's dead? No. <laughs> Here you go, Andy. Um, GG's, dude. Oh, thank you very much. GG's G -G you as well. It sounded like we were neck and neck, and it would have come down to the wire had just we shared the same luck in phase two. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think it's really interesting with this randomizer, especially like running vanilla Earthbound for so long. You play this randomizer, and you learn so many mechanics of the game of Earthbound with different bosses and different weaknesses and everything that you exploit that you would never touch in the vanilla game. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we talked a little bit about how there there's so many, so many strategies uh, that are applicable to Earthbound that you won't find either in the speed run or in a casual playthrough, but come up in this randomizer. Yeah, I don't think you would ever use Brain Shock anywhere in a vanilla yeah. playthrough or a speed run, but I will use that everywhere in Gygus. <laughs> So we did a little bit of uh, editing of the credits here. We can see some statistics about the cave length, the uh, Nessus level at the end of it, the uh, amount of door transition, so how long it took you to go through. Um, and, and of course, let's see what else we got. Random battles, 42, scripted 14. Uh, there, there, I don't think there was uh, really I did, there, anything. The run was relevant. humane. I'm sorry? Yeah. The run was humane. Yes, uh, did, did you release the chicken? Yes. Okay, excellent. One thing. chicken freed. There it is. Nice. And two L button, no problem here. Excellent run. The no problem here is essentially when you're mashing, it's very common for runner to mash L and A. And if you overmash L, you get a no problem here dialogue. And with fast text, it's very common to get that a lot. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a meme. All right, well, thank you, Andy and Thomas. Uh, oh, such a rough seed. It's an excellent showcase. You both did a great job. I think uh, we're ready to get set up for PK Scramble. Great running, both. Uh, all right, sounds good. Please be sure to follow all of the runners and commentators for this segment. I'm gonna be providing that below. Again, that's twitch.tv slash andyperfect, twitch.tv slash T-S-J-O-N-T-E. Uh, we have a twitter.com slash S-T-O-C-H-A-Z-T-I-C, and then uh, twitch.tv slash jtolmar. So please be sure to follow all of these wonderful folks on their respective uh, social networks and Twitch channels. 
So, before we go to a break again, remember folks that Random Number Generation and GDQ Hotfix is brought to you by viewers like you. Your subs, gift subs, Amazon Prime subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support our weekly Hotfix content. Thank you so much for supporting our shows. Remember, if you have missed out on any of our GDQ Hotfix shows, check out our archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. And if you are watching on YouTube, feel free to join us at twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out our live shows starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. As a reminder, we will be shifting times for some of our GDQ Hotfix shows. Check out gamestarquick.com slash hotfix for more information. And GDQ's Some of Best Segments is now launched on YouTube. It's a highlight channel with regular videos like our main channel, but with small highlight reels for all of our main events and hotfix. And with that, everyone, get up and stretch, hydrate, and we'll be right back with Random Number Generation. Welcome back to Random Number Generation. I am joined here by the Earthbound Randomizers. Remember, there's two of them here tonight, community. The second one in this segment is going to be PK Scramble Randomizer, and I am all ready to hear about this as well as watch it. Take it away, you all. All right, thanks for the intro, Scramble. I'm Tolmar, the creator of this randomizer. I am joined by Chaz, the creator of the randomizer that you all just watched. Hello, Chaz. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here for the second randomizer. Um, and we also have uh, Andy and IQ are going to be our runners today. They're our fastest two runners according to the qualifier times of our most recent tournament. Um, and it's great to have them both on board for this. How are you doing, Andy and IQ? I am doing excellent. I should have let I should I should have prompted you one of the time instead of making you talk yeah. over each other. All right, so we're gonna get started in just a second, but I believe that you all can see their trackers up here, and it's a lot to look at. So before we dive into the actual rando, um, that row on the very top is the key items that they've found, and then all of that text are different checks in the game. This is a logical tracker that will tell them what they have access to. Um, so they'll be checking off what they've done, and that'll help them figure out what they have available to do, because this is a key item randomizer. Um, can be kind of difficult to figure out everything while you're also trying to play the game. Um, and with that, I think we're about ready. Um, we just have uh, to enter in those last names. You can see uh, already what we've talked about a little bit, that the window flavors uh, are really advanced for PK Scramble. We've got some Absolutely. great contributions from the community to these. We've got some really fun window flavors. These are just two of them. There's a, a whole bevy of them. Yeah, these are um, spring flavor and mansion flavor, and I'm glad that we got two very extra flavors to uh, be showing off this time. So with that, I believe both of the runners are ready. I'm going to give them their countdown, and we'll be off to go. Um, so I'm going to start from 5, it'll be uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, let's do it. All right, so Tolmar, what's, what's the elevator pitch for PK Scramble? All right, so PK Scramble is a Earthbound key item randomizer. Um, the, so the main thing it's going to be doing is shuffling around key item locations. So up at the meteor on top of Annette, you might find the Tentacrout at the um, library where you normally find the Shrymus book. You might find a wad of bills. Um, in addition to that, the character join locations are randomized, so you might find who in the cabin where Paula is normally held. And in addition to that, we add something called PK checks. These are places where certain plot NPCs in the game that would normally be telling, about, telling you about your quest or telling you about PSI will instead give you random teleport locations. And that's what opens up this game and makes it non-linear. So they've already talked to BuzzBuzz, Buzz and I've already missed what BuzzBuzz Buzz had for them, but BuzzBuzz Buzz is a PK check and gives them a teleport. Um, they'll also be heading up to Liar Exaggerates Manny Manny statue, which is another one, and the Meteor, which is a key item. Um, so that's like the generic starting play that everyone will do on this, um, unless yeah, you use Buzz random Buzz. start locations. BuzzBuzz Buzz was a teleport to Tucson instead of the uh, Soundstone. Good eye catching that. Um, I have trouble finding that sometimes with how fast they go through this text. Um, like yeah, Ancient again, Cave, we're... yeah, like Ancient Cave, we have instant text speed on this. Um, and that's four side from the Manny Manny statue. I'm glad so... you caught that one. I didn't catch that one, even though I was looking. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so with all of this, they are going to be trying to get to Gygus and beat Gygus, just as you would in vanilla. Um, one wrinkle on that is that we are playing with something that's standard for races on this. Um, there will only be um, four sanctuaries required. So any four sanctuaries, and they're allowed to go off to Gygus. In addition to that, they will have to find a way to get to Gygus, which means finding a way to Saturn Valley and the meteorite piece. In addition to that, they will need to find Paula somewhere, because Paula is required to beat Gygus in this. Um, you've probably already noticed some strange things going on with the enemies. We have quite a few extra random flags turned on to showcase different things about the randomizer. Um, but before I get into all the extra randomness that's going on, one more key feature of this randomizer is that once it lays out all of these item locations and all these different places that the enemies can be, um, or that the items can be, it will figure out some logically possible path through the game, and it's going to scale all of the enemies according to that path. So, some route through the game, if you follow it, all the enemies will slowly get more difficult. That said, they don't know that route, and the logical route isn't the fastest route, it is just a route. So, they might end up finding enemies that they're not quite ready for, or completely not ready for, as they go through this. Now, in the time that it took me to say all of that, I see that IQ is already at um, the Frank spot, which is Clumsy Robot. We normally include boss shuffle in this, and any boss can be anywhere, because enemies, as I mentioned, are scaled according to how deep into the seed the logic expects you to be by the time you find them, and it really can be anyone anywhere. Um, we also turned on full enemy shuffle, so those also can be anything, anywhere. Um, right. So yeah, you'll so be seeing... Good. Oh, go ahead. If the logic is expecting you to go to Frank's place first, then that clumsy robot's going to be pretty weak. But if the logic is expecting it to be a later fight, then that clumsy robot's going to be rather strong. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you could usually guess that what's ever in Frank's spot's going to be fairly easy, um, but it's not completely guaranteed. Also see, up on Andy's side, he's picked up the diamond, and so he is in Foresight, he found the teleport to Foresight, he's freeing the Runaway 5 from Foresight. You may remember in Vanilla that you need to free these guys in Tucson and ride their bus to get through a ghost-infested tunnel. Well, you can ride their bus the other way to get through a different uh, ghost-infested tunnel on the way back here. Um, I see a comment in chat, how do I get the Earthbound Randomizer? This one is on um, pkscramble.com. And the one that was previously showcased was earthbound.app. I thought it was RNG. I must have the command wrong. Oh, no, there it is. Nice done. Yeah, so this one is the pkscramble.com. So he's already, uh, sorry, that's, uh, Andy's already taken off towards the desert. Uh, he had the sign banana, but uh, that wouldn't be used there at the same time. Um, the sign banana would be what you would get there in vanilla. Um, the sign banana will let you go to the sewers and Magnet Hill. Um, that's also a key item check, so I'm sure he'll be doing that soon. But okay. doing exactly what he's doing right now actually makes a lot of sense, because this will take him to Threed. There is a kid in Threed in the zombie prison, um, and most runners will be prioritizing those kid checks first. So you see the IQ is already heading over there and going to do exactly the same thing. All right, so I, I haven't seen too many of these, so I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions, but I do oh. know that one of the most important things is getting the kids as soon as possible, because that's going to make all of your fights easier. Plus the kids, uh, do all of them come with spare items or a, a couple um, of them do, right? Jeff and Pooh come with spare items and all three kids are needed for at least one check in the game. So. Um, Jeff is useful for, you have to have Jeff to go to the boogie tent. Um, so I'm kind of guessing it might be Jeff here, just because they have access to the boogie tent. Um, and then Paula, you need Paula before Everjet will give you an item. Um, and then Pooh has one as well. So as an early game strategy, prioritizing the kid check locations is one of the most important things. Yeah, absolutely. And the logic and the enemy scaling will take into account how many kids you're expected to have. But as I mentioned, the logic is just going through in some randomly possible order with everything shuffled. Um, it's not necessarily a good order, and you'll probably pick up those kids earlier than the logic expects you, so you have some easy fights ahead of you before the logic catches up to what you've done. That lady had dogs and fleas in a burning hotel room. Oh yeah, so um, we have enemy shuffle on, so all of those things are shuffled. And holy cow, Andy did not find a kid there. He found Flying Man. 
Um, so Flying Man is not useful for any checks, does not have any inventory space, but is extremely buff and will let him just fly through several checks coming up ahead. Interesting. So he's, he's still the, the power of the Flying Man from Vanilla. Yeah, it's not scaled at all. Um, I was planning on scaling it after adding it, but we had an early Flying Man seed in one of the weekly races, and it was so fun and just having people <laughs> plow through for part of the game that people went and did it. So the downside Flying is that unlocks nothing. The upside is your next fights are going to be uh, cakewalks. Yeah, and that Flying Man lasts quite a long time. Though they are playing with Cursed Enemies, which is a additional difficulty setting that we do not normally do competitively. Um, what this will do is add a certain number of buffs to enemies, and these buffs range from um, 75% or 75 extra HP, 50% extra other stats, um, more difficult attack scripts, having PSI shields, all sorts of mean things that we'll see throughout here. And they have two curses on every enemy to make this a little extra spicier for everyone. I just want to point out in the dialogue where you've, you've changed all this dialogue to insert the enemy names uh, into the right spot and changed up so much of the dialogue of this game to to fit what, what's going on uh, in the randomizer. And, and as, as a fellow Earthbound dev, I know that none of that is easy and you've poured uh, hours and hours and hours into this. So it, yeah. you've made a really polished... Uh, an extremely polished experience like it like the game was designed to be this way and i more than anyone else know that it was not so i, I really appreciate all the work you put into this uh -huh. thank you very much Chaz. and i have to give a shout out to the entire P um, pk hack community especially the people who made coil snake which this would just not be possible without that um, this game is not designed to be played out of order at all and without certain things that previous people have done, such as adding more event flags and making it easier to change all of that dialogue and script, it just would not have been possible. What, what did we get from Purple there? I just missed it. I missed it too. Um, it looks like IQ is about to finish off the uh, Frank fight, which will also tell us right after it. Ooh, also, it's really a stop sign time. there. It's a stop sign. Well, I mean, it does say stop, so yeah. Oh, man. All right, it looks like it's the pencil eraser over on the Perkle's, um, Perkle check. So okay. I don't remember if they have two synaxis yet. Um, if they do, then they can do that. It does, oh yeah, they do have two synaxis. That was one of the teleports. Yep. The very first thing from BuzzBuzz Buzz gave us a uh, teleport to Tucson, although we're going to, uh, Andy's going to Foreside. Yeah, they have a lot of options. Um, so there's two free open checks in uh, Foreside that you can do right off the bat. There's one in Tucson, and then they also have that pencil eraser, which gives them more in Tucson, and the signed banana, which gives them more in Foreside. So, yeah, they have just a lot of places they could be going right now. Yeah, and they could, uh, I suppose with the banana, they could go into the sewer and have the uh, Flying Man help them. Even if it's a highly leveled place, the Flying Man could help them out there, so that would be an option too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually something that's been used strategically a couple of times, is to, if you have one of these Flying Man seeds, to go somewhere very high level and get a bunch of items and experience that match that high level. So I something else that's... A... Sure, go um, ahead. I just noticed on Andy's side that that Wooly Shambler sprayed a blast of water. Um, it is not something you would normally expect. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, uh, so you've scaled uh, attacks down and up, so uh, enemies that have certain attacks, like uh, let's say a, a lightning attack, if an enemy that's a lightning attack type enemy uh, ends up being very early on uh, in the progression, then you've created like a, a easier form of a lightning attack so that it doesn't instantly kill you all the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, lightning attacks are a great example of that because the game has a whole bunch of renamed versions of PSI Thunder Beta. Um, so I had to go through and make versions of that at different power levels because this game does not have any sort of magic offense stat. All of the attacks for PSI just do fixed damage. So there really isn't anything that is appropriate for a low-level character to be facing that is still a thunder attack. So you'll see the crashing boom-bang attack that many enemies have. Um, if you're even deeper than you're supposed to be or have like additional difficulty flags turned on, that could turn into a thunderous crack a thum attack. Um, but if it's very easy in the game, it might just be a fizzing zip-zap attack.
which, with the damage that goes with those choices of silly words. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of fun ones in there. It's, it's pretty cool. So they are taking those different routes that we talked about. Uh, IQ taking that route that I talked about going into the sewer with the uh, flying man while Andy went to Moonside. Yeah, and he found a criminal caterpillar down there. Um, those are enemies that you normally think of as EXP pinatas, but they're also really dangerous. So, um, it looks like IQ is going to be picking up experience from these, but each of these is going to be chipping away at Flying Man's HP. And Flying Man cannot heal. So, they'll be losing some Flying Man a little earlier if they keep taking those. Interesting. Uh, other things I've noticed, I noticed IQ picked up uh, two exit mice. Oh yeah, That's so we have normal. double exit mice. Um, unlike Ancient Cave, exit mice work completely normally in this because everything is structurally um, normal, so they actually are divided up into caves and such. Yeah, um, but to speed everything up, to exit from. Yeah, but to speed everything up, um, the well, all of the exit mice locations will let you pick up two of them. And that's actually worked out really well. Um, makes the routing a little more fun, it speeds things up. And if you actually talk to those two exit mice before you pick them up, the one you normally pick says, um, let me light your way on the dark road, very dramatic little mouse. And the other one says, ooh, can I come too? Um, and now we can. So I'm glad that we got to let that mouse finally live out his dream. The mouse's dreams are fulfilled uh, a scant, what, 30 years later. So taking the sanctuary, so... Uh, Ooh, and it's Ness's Nightmare, and it's gone already. Oh, oh that's... wow, that was fast. Yeah, Ness's Nightmare is the worst boss in this. Um, not, like, absolutely certainly, but I don't think it's because, off of any Because it list. will be scaled, right? So Yes. Um, Ness's Nightmare is actually responsible for many of the things that needed to be scaled in this, and many of the scaling changes that had to happen to make this possible. Because um, Ness's Nightmare's attacks are very, very nasty, um, and it, like, knows life up, which is surprisingly terrible at low levels. Um, but yeah, we just got through it with no problem with that flying man. Andy's starting the long hike to Peaceful Rest Valley. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Um, I don't know if he picked up uh, Key to the Cabin or something that would... Oh, it looks like he did. Yeah, yep. so... Um, so that, this that is, means that's a kid check there, so he'll get a new, hopefully get a new party member, right? Yeah, um, definitely something people would prioritize once they have everything there. This check does take a while to head over here, and there's no teleport in Peaceful Rest Valley. But he's also being chased by a strange lady. Um, I mentioned we have cursed enemies on. One of the things that the enemy sprite gets replaced with a random NPC sprite, sometimes that catches you by surprise. Yeah. We also, uh, similarly, we have a challenge flag for the uh, Ancient Cave Randomizer, where all of the enemy sprites are replaced with diamonds, uh, which have the uh, extremely difficult, uh, it's extremely difficult to dodge them because of how they move, so. Oh yeah. One of the curses in this is that movement pattern separate from the sprite. So a nice. completely benign bear might just start zooming around back and forth. Oh, key to the cabin and Franklin. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, I also noticed we have PSI shuffle on. So the way that that works is all of the kids are gonna have their PSI shuffled around. Um, their learn rate will be the same as it is in their original slot. Um, it looks like um, Ness in this scene has Starstorm instead of Rockin. So that's actually pretty similar. They fill similar roles. Um, and you'll be starting out with a baby Starstorm instead of full strength Starstorm Alpha. So it won't completely trivialize the seed or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we'll the be seeing... biggest difference between them would be that uh, Starstorm can't miss due to speed. Yeah. Um, and also, Rockin can. And Rockin also has a higher variance in the damage it does, so mm. Starstorm is just multiple ways more reliable. Speaking of Starstorm, we found Poo in the cabin that Paula is normally locked in. Nice. Um, and, yeah, so the person who is here would have an item, which would be the um, Franklin Badge. Um, plus, Pooh comes with an item, which would be the Tiny Ruby. And we got the UFO engine, and I already forgot what the other item was. It was Pack of Bubblegum. Thank you. Um, yeah, so UFO engine, there's one of three-ish added um, new items in this. There are a couple of places in this game where you would normally have like an extremely remote plot flag that wouldn't make a lot of sense to randomize, um, such as Paula having a psychic premonition that you need to go back to three because the uh, Skyrunner is repaired. 
Um, that one is replaced with a UFO engine. Some other ones are replaced with some other items that are similar to that. Okay. So if I was going to start running this in at night, uh, had a UFO engine, how, what, what would be the best way for me to know what that means and what I should do about that? Um, there are several ways that you can do that. One is any of these new items. If you check the help text, um, the help text does actually say, um, this, you, most of the help text for these have a joke going on where it's like a vague hint at what you're supposed to do, followed by an extremely obvious hint what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so the UFO engine will be like, oh, you can use this to repair a UFO. And then it says, it says it was going to three. Um, so you can use those. Um, there's a huge guide on the website. If you're a fan of reading, it explains everything in great detail. <laughs> um, and if you're not as much of a fan of reading, you can always talk to a hint man. Um, the hint men in this do explain the logical progression, though sometimes their hints aren't the greatest. Um, you have to clear out whatever they told you to do, and then they'll give you a new hint. And they will always get you to the end of the game. Well, Andy just ate a repel sandwich. That's not an item that's in vanilla Earthbound. It is not. So repel sandwiches replace the skip sandwich because, as you've noticed, and as is also in your rando, um, they have skip sandwich speed all the time. So the repel sandwich uses the same timer that the skip sandwich would, so it's 10 seconds, and it turns off all enemy spawns for that duration. Um, repel sandwiches ended up being a major part of the meta for this, finding a location to find those repel sandwiches, and then loading up on the right number of them for the dungeons you're going to go through speeds up things a ton, so they end up being very important. Yeah, we've also got just, some some aspects that are different, uh, where you've got repel sandwiches in yours, but I don't in mine. But we've got others that are similar, where we both have run speed and we both have instant text, so... Yeah, it's kind of funny. The instant text ended up being exactly the same patch, even though um, I did not look at yours. I was just like, oh... Um, it's just how you do it in this game. Yeah, that is how you do it. So we got Barf here in the uh, cave by Peaceful Rest Valley. Yep, um, and you have Pooh in your party for Barf, so that actually comes with some extra text, which maybe Andy will slow down for, and maybe he won't. Oh, right, this is the Barf that's in uh, yeah. uh, Deep Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so normally... In vanilla, in vanilla yeah. that's where Pooh comes in with his Star Storm, so instead you've got the, some fun text there. Yeah, if you uh, have Pooh in your party, um, Pooh will finish off Barf for you, and... Um, Everyone will be concerned about him, and Pooh will explain he just doesn't like gross-out humor. We're oh, getting yeah. this uh, shiny spot. Do we need to get all eight sanctuary locations? Um, we only need four, which is standard for a race in this. Um, okay. You can do eight. You can do any number from two to eight. Um, I disabled so numbers all, lower than all... two because they take forever to generate. All, all eight of them are available. In, in this seat, if they wanted to, they could go to all eight, but they only need to go to four of them. Yes, any four of them will do. Um, there will be four of them that are in logic. So every one of them they go to, if they talk to the shining spot, it'll say this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. Um, but they could just go do the eighth. It has occasionally happened that someone actually does the eighth sank in a four sank and skips some other one instead. Um, of course, those that eighth sanctuary will have very difficult enemies, um, more difficult than Gygus because Gygus is also scaled in this. So you do not typically go any deeper than the fifth. Um, Ready. Or some other things. Oh, so, so something that uh, we've seen here, uh, we've seen on this that we didn't see earlier, but does exist earlier, is this palette randomization. Ooh, we got a wild one here in the uh, happy, happy cultist house. Yeah, They're pink, pink. Pink, pink. I have not went through and changed all of their texts to be correct for the palette randomization. <laughs> I looked at oh, it, that, and it would have been a lot of work. <laughs> that's the, I can't even imagine how hard. Uh, but yeah, so palette randomization is also an option in, uh, in uh, the ancient cave randomizer as well. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like that um, Robo Pump just bit Poo and gave him a cold. So that's something you gotta watch out for. Those Robo Pumps have filthy fangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Def definitely gotta watch out for those. Uh, IQ picking up Poo out of the jail cell. It's uh, not too far behind, although they've, they've taken different paths to get here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had a hard time keeping track of what each of them have all done. It's kind of good that we have right. our trackers handy. 
Yeah, so where on the tracker does it say how many uh, sanctuaries they've done? <laughs> it does not. People just count by hand. Oh, okay. Um, though I think they, that would be a good feature request for the tracker developer. Hint, hint, tracker developer. <laughs> So, uh, d do we recall what what things? Because we're we're trying to get to four. So, where where are they all? I know, IQ um, did uh, the sewers. Yes, and Andy has done Lilliput. I imagine IQ will be doing Lilliput shortly. Um, so right, that is, he's in the area. Yeah, so that is two of them. Um, they're also going to be looking for Paula and um, Seven Valley access. So typically, you don't really worry too much about your sanctuary accesses until you have a little closer to needing it. Um, Seven Valley is really something you're going to have to find before you can get too far into the seed. But some of these, um, Lilliput is so far away from anything that if you're here, you will do it. Um, and uh, the sewer one, uh, Magnet Hill, is the only one that's attached to a key item, so that one people will also do early. Gotcha. Thank you also picking up all the, uh, sorry, not skip sandwiches, repel sandwiches. Yeah, they're oh, used for skipping enemies, so then... Three mm -hmm. looks lovely at this time of year. Nice autumnal colors. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, California's on fire to me. <laughs> it looks like uh, Andy is repairing that Skyrunner. Gonna head off to Summers um, because this rando skips a lot of things and this will also skip the detour to Winters. Just go straight to Summers for this. Nice. Pretty That's nice cute. pink sky in there too. Yeah, yeah. It's uh again that that might be those fires. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. IQ repelling his way through the uh cave. Yep. Um Lilliput Steps actually has a lot of 100% enemy tiles. So unlike Ancient Cave, all of the enemy spots are vanilla in this. Um the contents of those enemy spots can be shuffled. We did turn on enemy shuffle for this seed. Um we also lower the spawn rate normally. Um and it's at 60%, which is our typical amount, but it skips over 100% spawn tiles. So fill up with steps because it has a lot of 100%ers, still has quite a few enemies, and it makes sense to be using those little sandwiches there. That was interesting. It looks like the game was struggling with those spawns chasing after the, uh, the uh, UFO. Oh, yeah. Uh, that whole those... scene is a little, a little bit jank. <laughs> those red caterpillars on the beach, would those be good? Uh, I, they might be pretty difficult, though, for with only two party members. Yeah, they're definitely excellent experience points, but caterpillars are very dangerous. Um, and beach spawns are pretty rare, so going back there so to does that mean... them might actually take a while. Sure. Does that mean if we've seen those red caterpillars at where Andy is, is... Uh, deeper in the logic than uh, the logical path? Um, we have an option to do that, but we actually have full random enemies. So you may remember that the... Um, oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you may remember that the Yes Men Jr. was replaced with a nuclear reactor robot at the very start of the scene. Right. So, um, yeah, that uh, Ancient Cave style having enemies appear that are more difficult in vanilla as you go through um, is actually a really fun option. Um, we've turned that on a couple of times. We did it for the first round of the tournament, um, and some of the runners really like it, so we might be seeing more of that going forward. Andy, with a quick use of the Suporma in there, so the Ode to Orange Kid was sung. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh yeah, so speaking of cursed enemies again, one of the curses is just that the enemy always drops the Suporma, um, and I made the Suporma undroppable, so you have to use it to get rid of it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I think given I a lot of the other curses... Because... <laughs> oh, maybe... Um, yeah, a lot of the curses are, um, a lot meaner than that. Um, that one is just, uh, kind of petty. Um, IQ is registering a meme. That, that seems different. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, that register your name, um, that register your name prompt is always used for a meme anyway. So I just made it so that Tony is aware of that. So whenever Tony shows up, which, uh, Nobody quite knows when, but it is once per seed. Um, he'll ask you to give him a meme because he's collecting memes for a school project. Um, and uh, was something very sweet for my for my queue here. And is off to Dreamland, and that gives him the ability to teleport to Patch Camp, which makes sense. Yeah, kinda. It really makes more uh, sense than what it does in uh, in vanilla. <laughs> 
a little bit, yeah. Um, so Magicant is not required in this. Um, we do have flags that'll make it required, but the typical one that we do is just, if you go to Magicant, then beat it. All of the kids currently in your party get the stat boost. Um, it can be very useful, um, but it is just that stat boost, so it's a big detour for stats. So in a race, you're probably not ever going to see it. Um, no, actually, it's, uh... Oh, is it a good strategy to get that stat boost? We have no idea. Um, <laughs> one of our fastest runners does it fairly often. Um, one of our fastest runners never does it. Um, I'm pretty sure it should be contextual, but it's really, really close. So if you have um, early access to Magicant and a good way to cheese a boss fight, I think it's probably worth it. If you have late access or you don't have a way to beat that boss, then maybe not. Um, it looks like Andy's stream is paused. Is that just on my side? Uh, it's still going on the main feed, so... Uh, wonderful. Alright, and we've got a boat ride for Andy. Um, this is a check that a lot of people like to avoid, because it is fairly slow. Um, but there's also a cutscene that is a lot of fun to watch, so when that boat gets near the end of its journey, you'll definitely want to keep an eye on what happens over there. It's not near the end of its journey yet, though, for people not familiar with the game. <laughs> so we had a, a Frankenstein come out of the water at us. That's a little unusual. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, some of the things that Boss Shovel does are so funny. Um, and I like when you have some other giant kaiju option instead of the Kraken. As a very big robot. Very big robot. And it looks like Andy got through it with no problem. Yep. The uh, flying men are down on both sides, it looks like. Yeah, but they do have Pooh, so that flying man got them to the point where they had another kid. Yeah, and of course Pooh coming with Freeze. Yeah. I haven't actually gotten a good look at their PSI menus yet. We'll need to keep an eye on that. Oh, right, PSI yeah, it's PSI randomization. This he may not have freeze. Yeah. Um, Pooh has two slots until you find a Starstorm. Um, Starstorm is mixed in with the teleport checks, so as you get further into the seed, you might find someone who teaches Pooh Starstorm, but of course, PSI is shuffled, so it could be Thunder or Freeze or who knows what. I also <coughs> just saw in this shop, uh, IQ is checking an OK pendant. Oh yeah, so OK Pendants are like the only equipment that has been added. Um, it is a weaker pendant than an Earth Pendant, and it smooths out the uh, Gygus difficulty that you'll run into on these four Sanctuary standard race seeds. Um, it offers less protection than an Earth Pendant. It's the same as the Diadem of Kings, if you happen to know what that is. Otherwise, it's about 30% to everything. Um, those are the best pendant you're likely to find on a four Sanctuary seed. So they are pretty critical to your Gygus fight. Okay. So in a four Sanctuary Seed, the Gygus fight itself is scaled to where you would be on levels after uh, four Sanctuaries. It's not that you gain enough levels after four Sanctuaries to put you at the difficulty of a normal Gygus fight. Correct. And Gygus will actually be, like, I don't know, like 60% as difficult by the numbers. Okay. Um, and it is still pretty spicy. It's nowhere near as spicy as an ancient cave, I guess. Um, <laughs> this is also very, very dicey without some sort of freeze protection, um, because it mm. turns out that at four sanctuary depth, freeze is the scary one, not a uh, flash. I just saw a sword of kings for Andy. Good job, you found the sword of kings. Nice. Um, so that that's still uh, in, in a. In a normal random, I see that'd be a pretty late game item, but we're seeing it here fairly early on in a four sanctuary. Yeah, um, a handful of items are not at their vanilla depths. Most of them are just based on how deep into vanilla you would be. Um, but some items in vanilla are in very silly locations, and the uh, I believe this is about four sides depth into the seed would be the uh, sort of kings. Gotcha. Just Despite, you know, its legendary status as Pooh's rare only weapon, it is about as strong as a minor league bat. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so Andy just ran into a interesting looking sprite there that ended up being Plague Rat of Doom. Yeah, um, very recently we got custom sprites for all the Sanctuary bosses for when they're 
shuffled out of their sanctuary spots. And those are um, courtesy of a Earthbound modder who goes by Messianic, also made um, Mother 2 Deluxe. So if you like his sprite work, you might want to check that out. Yeah, it's a fun mod. Good old foppies. Good old foppies. Still worth a lot of experience. Um, on these cursed enemy seeds, foppies are a little dicey. There's a couple of the curses that can make them really nasty. Hmm. Yeah, on uh, Earthbound Random, uh, the Ancient Cave Randomizer, foppies are actually pretty interesting because of uh, part of the scaling of the enemies uh, is based on their EXP. So they get placed, uh, they get scaled along with enemies that are much more difficult for them, which means they can randomly get assigned uh, like attack or HP values that are way harder than you're used to encountering with them. So like a six stack of foppies can absolutely wipe the floor with you uh, in the ancient cave, which can be a real big surprise if you're coming in expecting them to be uh, pushovers. Um, yeah, that's very mean. Uh, in this, they are normally HP and pinatas, and this you're extremely underleveled for where they are. Um, but because we have that cursed enemies flag on, they could explode or have PSI shields, which can be very nasty surprises if you try to use Star Storm on them or something like that. Yeah, exploding poppies are bad. There's also a small chance in the uh, Ancient Cave Randomizer that enemies that don't explode will. Um, yeah, and you have all of the. Yeah, you have all of those on by default. Um, you have to like opt into me being that mean to you in PK Scramble. Oh no, it's fine. Sometimes <laughs> things explode. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is a great shot. Multi bottle rockets, Gaia Beam, Hormone of Life, Legendary Holy Bat, Bottle of cow. DX Water, Magic Fry. This is the best shop I've ever seen in anything ever. I have no idea how that shop ended up so good. Um, I'm going to have to assume that this area is just not required and they don't need to be going through Dungeon Man at all. Um, but somehow this ended up super deep into the seed. We did turn up item scaling a little bit for this showcase and partly to uh, alleviate the fact that we wanted cursed items on there. But we didn't turn it up so much that they should be seeing MBRs and multi-bottle rockets. Or MBRs and legendary bats. Said the same thing twice there. Got the life noodles in this chest, so all these chests might be really good then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is scaled the same as that shop, so... Whatever's in here is likely very, very good. Yeah, there's a couple or, of those there. I might, uh, Andy's not interested, but if it were me, I'd go at least poke at those other presents. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he isn't. Um, so the only thing you get for doing Dungeon Man is a teleport to deep darkness. Um, you may or may not actually need it, but if you don't do your Dungeon Man check and you do need it, you have to go through the entire pyramid again. So people will usually do it unless they're absolutely certain that they're not going to deep darkness this seed. Andy, no interest in those gifts. Whew. Yeah, kind of surprising. Um, maybe he's thinking that Deep Darkness is going to have even better items, so he doesn't need to bother him, but I'm going to kind of bet that Deep Darkness is lower scale than this. Oh, interesting, even though... Because there's multiple ways to get to it, it's not... This isn't the only way to get to Deep Darkness. Yeah, my case? best... Yeah, my best guess for why the items here are so good is that this is an alternate way to Deep Darkness that they don't need. I say they're so good, and then the one he checks ends up being an exterminator spray, so... Yeah. The exterminator spray no. is fairly deep into the logic. Um, I think it's... Like... Yeah, it, it's deep into the logic for uh, uh, Ancient Cave, too, uh, the way my logic works. I've, a number of times I've had to knock exterminator spray out from being a guaranteed floor nine item. <laughs> um, yeah, there's it one per seed. Really sad. Yeah, there's one per seed in PK Scramble, and it's... Um... I think it's 10 levels higher than um, Summer's Depth, which I think is Deep Darkness Depth. I'm not exactly sure. Um, Two different boat rides right now. Yep, various boats. Um, looks like they're doing kind of the same things, just different orders. And still, we'll be uh, seeing Deep Darkness shortly. Andy still hasn't gone back for four side sewers, right? So IQ still has that uh, that one more sanctuary than him. That's right. IQ is still up a sanctuary, and I don't remember what the item was that they got out of the, um, the end of the sewers. But it does look like Andy is going to be bailing here, um, just doing this for the teleport, as we mentioned. Throwing off a fun glitch that's in vanilla, yeah. where that uh, periscope just does funny things if you teleport out of here. Yeah, it's a bit silly looking, but uh, hey, it's fun. 
looks like they picked up a winter teleport and bought a meteorite piece for a single dollar. So that is one of the items that they absolutely have to have. That's good to find. That's a cheap meteorite piece. Yeah, uh, she just sells things for a dollar. Um, it can be a diamond the size of your fist. It can be a wad of cash. Diamond going to get there? No, not quite. So diamonds, not quite there. We got diamonds and bears. Bears and diamonds. There's got to be a song out of that somehow. Um, I'm just implying there was. So someone get to work on it. All right, so this is going to be a Tessie rind for Andy, I assume. Otherwise, he wouldn't be heading down here. You feed this monkey the gum, and then you get to go to Southern Winters. There's two checks down there and a sanctuary. I didn't see whether they have the eraser eraser, so they might not have to do the worst check in the game. Uh, going through the uh, Starman base? Yeah. Um, people don't even like seeing the key item that lets you get there, the eraser eraser, because that no. check is very long. Um, it has a lot of large enemy spawn spots. Um, because in this randomizer, what's at the end of the Starman base? What do you get for doing it? Uh, just a key item. Oh, yeah. You gotta, yeah. You gotta really hope that you don't need that key item. Yeah, it's a long check for not a lot. Some of the other long checks that take you out of the way, like Happy Happy Village, are at least a cluster of checks. Um, this one is not so great. IQ, in some ways, uh, hot on Andy's heels, but in some ways ahead of him, because he does have that one more uh, one more dungeon done. Although it would not be too difficult for Andy to go do that, because it's right in the center of Foresight. Yeah, and one of the things you find with these is that both runners, once they've done one of these route swaps and diverge from each other, they'll do whatever the other one did much, much faster, because this is an RPG and they've picked up items and experience and that sort of thing. Right. So we're still missing two of the kids. Is it possible to, especially in, in, in a four sanctuary, to beat the game without picking up all the kids? It is. Um, you need Paula. That's actually required because you need someone to pray. We don't have um, the skills randomized like we do in Ancient Cave. Um, but yeah, there are just Ness and Paula scenes up to four sank. Um, it might be physically possible to have Ness and Paula on an eight sank, but it would be just unbelievably unlikely to, to have something like that happen. Mm. Um, and then if you play this on two sanctuaries, then Ness and Paula becomes very common. Mm. On cave, pretty easy for Andy. I guess yeah. uh, with a repel sandwich. I imagine boogie runners wish they had a repel sandwich for pond cave. Yeah, um, those repel sandwiches really do speed up a lot of places. Um, I definitely like them in Fire Springs. Um, even the even ignoring the fights, the lag it saves is tremendous there. And I think he's picking through the pyramid, picking up that mole very, or rat very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that is an extra sanctuary for Andy. Okay, so they're both at two now, right? Or I believe so, yeah. Okay. I think you're right. Um, I think it is two each. And I don't think they have access to a fourth at all. They both do have the ability to do the one that the other one hasn't. Right, and so... And it looks like we have a zombie paper hint phone call for Andy. Um, so that's Apple Kid, after a certain number of sanctuaries, will tell you where the zombie paper is, because it is a pretty critical item, giving you access to Saturn Valley. And we just learned that it is on Everdread. And okay. Apple Kid's mouse has a yogurt dispenser, and that is another critical item. That is um, access to the Monotoli building, which is another character check. Right, and those character checks, uh, they, they definitely still need to go through some character checks because they have to find Paula to beat the game. Here's a yes. chance for Andy to meme it up. Yep, let's uh, see what you've got here, Andy. <laughs> it looks like we've just decided to be wholesome on both of them. Nice. More wholesome memes. More wholesome memes. Um, disagree with that spelling, Andy. Or maybe you just timed out. That, that's exactly how much space you have. I do no longer disagree with your spelling, Andy. Um, Alright, looks like he's going to go into Foresight. He did pick up that yoga dispenser, which is 
an excellent choice of place to go, because it's a kid check and there's a key item over there. All right, so we'll see. Uh, so we already know you can get Flying Man instead of one of the kids. Is there anything else you can get at the uh, at the kid checks inside from kids? Um, yeah, you can end up with just a teddy bear, though Ooh. there are four kid checks and three kids that you need, so there will only be one non-kid per seed. Um, okay. So this is guaranteed to be an actual kid and not a teddy bear. Okay. So you yeah, that, have teddy bears uh, flying man seeds and you have teddy bear seeds, basically. That's right. Um, we're pretty sure that I'm going to be adding a extra kid check after the tournament. So then you'll have an opportunity to get both of them every seed. IQ gets his meteorite piece for a buck. <laughs> I didn't even see that uh, tiny little replacement for the security robot. So Andy has to wait uh, oh. 10 seconds to fight this red antoid. All right, so uh, if, if you're at skip sandwich speed, and this is true in uh, vanilla and both the randomizers, you can get in those doors uh, and avoid those robots if you move correctly. So you, yeah, uh, it is a you little tricky, and... though. Yeah, so yep. you can get through this one, too. No problem for Andy. Um, probably a little harder if you end up with, like, a demonic petunia or something very large in that slot. This spook and was rattling and clanking. That spook was rattling and clanking and very easy for Andy to pick through. I was just about to mention that Department Spook is a little scary, has very strong PSI attacks. And we found Paula. Nice. So I believe that they need... Oh, they have Tucson access. We know that the zombie paper is on Everdread. Um, Everdread requires Paula. So, oh, okay, that is just go mode for Andy. Um, so we picked up a hint for the zombie paper being on Everdread. They need Paula for Everdread. They just got Everdread, or just got Paula. They can just go do that, get the zombie paper, take the zombie paper through the three tunnel, go to Saturn Valley, use that fly honey to beat Belch base, and pick up a sanctuary up there. And that would be the fourth sank for the seed. So Andy just knows how to finish off this seed now. Okay, so yeah, so he's got two sinks done, and he knows how to get two more, so he doesn't need to search out any more items. Yep, I'm just going to be burning down things very quickly. I believe he already has okay pendants, which is the main prep thing that you want. Um, unless you can find a rain pendant, rain pendant's even better, but a little harder to find. Um, yeah, and uh, in go mode and just one sanctuary behind, it's looking pretty good for Andy right now. Okay, so for IQ, we're, he's basically hoping to basically follow the exact same path uh, that Andy took and come across the same discoveries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I doubt there's going to be any divergences here. How likely is it that there's another sanctuary or another option uh, that he would find? Or is it he's almost certainly going to find the exact same option? Um... Given the checks that they have available, I think it is just guaranteed to be the same. Um, okay. there, there's guaranteed to be other ways to find other sanctuaries, but um, we already know that the mouse leads the direction that Andy's going. Um, the mouse is the only thing that IQ can find down here, so he'll be following up that same set of stuff very shortly. Okay. Um... So in, in any given, like, four sink seed uh, that's been run, like, how, what percent of the time do they, the runners, end up doing the same four sanctuaries? Is it like 90%, I'm guessing? Um, yeah, probably just under 90% they'll do the same four. Um, if you have a large race with a lot of runners running the same seed, then the fifth sanctuary will come into play for a lot of them. Um, some races you'll have, like, half of the runners are doing... Um, the fifth sanctuary and half of them are doing the first four um, using the numbers that the brando will tell you um, right and then the actual routes that you do to get to them the most seeds will have actually this is fairly typical um you have like a big point of divergence and everyone goes and does different stuff and then you kind of end up back in the same spot when they're done um, sometimes you end up with just doing completely different things a handful of times you end up with actually just linear um it's like two big linear paths that seeds sometimes end up on um, hmm. where you just do like vanilla-ish with like addendums where you do like on it, Tucson, whatever. 
Um, and then there's the long chain of uh, summers down through deep darkness, but that one's very rare. Well, cool. Um, yeah, so they are on their way, though. We figured out how to beat this seed already. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Andy's figured out. Has IQ... Um, IQ does not yet know. Um, okay. I believe the he has Go to do mode... the yogurt dispenser path yes. to get Paula. Yeah, so he could diverge here and do one of several other checks instead of yogurt dispenser, but because okay. that's a kid check, it's just kind of guaranteed that he's going to be doing that. Okay. Yeah, um, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, um, this ended up being a fairly straightforward one. It looks like uh, IQ is opting to pick up Repel Sandwich Deluxes from this caveman. Um, those last twice as long as the regular one. Um, end up being a little better than twice as good, just because you don't have that in-between time as often. Yeah, that's true. So less menuing and also fewer inventory slots taken up, which uh, if this ends up being a three kid, uh, a three kid seed could be important. Um, it looks like Andy is actually going to giant step. I didn't notice that they had the item for that. So that is a oh. potential place where their sanctuaries could just diverge here. Um, I this wasn't would be expecting... a lot faster than going through all that three to get up to uh, Saturn Valley, right? Um, they'll have to do three up to Saturn Valley, but this does let them skip Belch base. Um, mm, okay. Yeah, and giant stuff is going to be. You would have to use... do belch base plus the uh, uh, sorry the valley that leads to trillion inch sprout. Yeah, I'm right now, but um, I think it's just milky well. Um, I don't yeah, think the valley itself has a name. Um, yeah, so they're going to be doing that. Um, milky well is faster than giant step, but it's certainly not fast. Or giant step is certainly faster than belch base plus milky well. Um, right. Though I could still see IQ picking up the other one. There are some advantages to doing Milky Well as your last sanctuary. Um, it routes really nicely into a guaranteed nice shop after you've beaten all your sanctuary requirements. Mm. Um, so yeah, this could just be one of the seeds where they end up doing different sanctuaries from one another. Yeah, and one of the sanctuaries being up in the air is pretty typical for these. Okay. We're climbing the ropes to where we normally find Titanic Ant. Yep, and this is the third Your Sanctuary location. That's Kraken. Well, that should be a somewhat weak Kraken, right? Yeah, Kraken gets slowed down. Yeah, oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah. Very um, weak Kraken, in fact. Very weak Kraken. Yeah, so Annie's fairly high level. Um, we did turn down some of the enemy stats for this seed to compensate for adding curses. Um, <laughs> And Kraken actually ends up having kind of low HP in all of these. Um, just due to the way that the logic works out for enemy scaling. Um, so if you can burn through Kraken before it actually starts to use all of its scary powers, then um, Kraken's not that big of a deal. And Andy nice. just got the message that Ness has absorbed the power of the land into his heart. That is normally played... Um, after you've beaten Nightmare, but that is our uh, notification that you are ready to go face Gygus. Okay, so he just gets a message there, and then uh, he has to get to Saturn Valley with the meteorite piece, right? Yeah, you need to get to Sanctu Saturn Valley with the meteorite piece and Paula, and then you can clear this out. And they do have the meteorite piece and Paula, and a way to Sanctu or Saturn Valley. So, or sorry, they know where the a way to Saturn Valley, so I imagine that's what Andy's going to be doing right now. Oh, interesting. IQ's in the desert. I didn't recall that being anything that Andy did. Yeah, that is interesting. I wonder what he decided to pick up over there. Is he just going to check the uh, arms dealer here? Uh, it could be. Um, there's a shop down here that has guaranteed repel sandwiches, but he did pick up those repel DXs, so I'm not exactly sure what his plan was down here. Yep, looks like just to check for the arms dealer who had nothing good. Pokey jumps off the roof there. Oh, hey, it's Pokey. Um, so, something that we can all guess now is that Pokey does end up being shuffled in this. Um, so, Gygus will be there, but whoever's helping out Gygus will be someone else. Um, so, everyone who's been paying attention to what bosses we've seen so far, you can start trying to figure out who will Gygus' assistant be this seed. Mm. The unfortunate uh, Andy's uh, poo did the confuse before uh, Ness attacked it, so the attack undid the confuse status, but uh, that yeah, Pokey didn't good. have that much HP, so 
Yeah, so got to pretty quickly. Um, I actually had to go in and manually increase Pokey's HP because Pokey turns out to be pretty weak without having all of Gygus next to him. Yeah, well, yeah, he's only doing damage every other turn. Uh, IQ loading up on super bombs. See, I don't think Andy did this. I don't think so either. The super bombs are very useful. Um, especially in these PSI shuffle seeds, sometimes you'll end up with kind of a jank set of PSI, not enough freeze or something like that, um, making it harder to get through these boss fights. Okay, so that this could be a difference maker, a way for uh, him to catch up. Yeah, definitely. Um, does still have several checks to go through to pick that up, though. So uh, when, when these runners are going through a normal progression, how hard does Skagas end up being being does it do they usually clear it in the first try or does it usually take a couple tries um it really depends on their preparation um the harder you go and the more enemies you skip the more likely you are to wipe on Gygus once um if you have the OK pendant and a uh, Franklin badge on this as they do um Gygus is fairly okay. The first phase will be more scary because it's a random boss with Gygus. Um, that said, the OK Pendant is just okay. It's not really a guarantee the way that the uh, C Pendant would be, or even as good as the Earth Pendant. So they'll be expecting Paula to be taking about 80 damage a turn um, with that OK Pendant equipped. So they need to keep at least another character alive to uh, heal Paula every turn. And there are a lot of things that can go wrong, especially if they don't have all of their prep. Um, one of the things that a lot of runners will do is grind for Shield Sigma to get through that first phase. Mm. Yeah, so if they if they do the Shield Sigma grind, they have the OK Pendant and several revive items and a Franklin Badge, it is pretty easy. The more of those things you skip, the more times you're going to wipe at Gygus. So one other thing, we've seen it quite a few times, but we don't think we've actually mentioned it yet. Uh, we talked about how in the Ancient Cave randomizer, the R button just drops the last thing you did. Uh, in this randomizer, you get a neat little menu when you hit the R button. Oh, that's right. So the R button menu in this is the last item that you picked up. You can move it to another kid. If it's an equipable, then you can equip it right there. You can also cancel out of the menu to drop an item. And if you equip an item, it replaces whatever is in the R button with the thing you unequipped. So you can do some very fancy chains of moving items around if you know exactly what everyone already has and are good with your R button. That's that's kind of trolly, right? Right uh, on this path that you absolutely have to take to get up to uh, Saturn Valley, which you have to go to beat the game. There's a gift box with a heavy bazooka, which would be great if you had anyone who could use it. Yep, no Jeff to use that heavy bazooka. Um, I always enjoy that the final chest of the game, the validation chest um, up in the Cave of the Past. Um, I really enjoy it when that's something completely useless, like Sword of Kings and they don't have poo. Um, yeah, you can't be a game developer without being at least a little evil, and that is where I get my evil from, is that check being bad. Uh... Andy couldn't quite teleport around those enemies, but uh, gets the backside attack, so he gets the instant win anyway. That's, uh, uh, oh, this Mr. Saturn fought. Oh, no. Oh, I missed it. What did we get this time? Uh, let's see. We'll see let's in see the shop. Yeah. Up again. Um, yeah, so they have Sprite Shuffle on. Um, sprite Shuffle means that the uh, Mr. Saturns all get replaced with something, and this time it is these Hawaiian shirt dudes. And with that, they also get their font replaced. And we have Comic Sans today, which is an excellent oh, choice of boy. font. Yeah, good font, good font. A good font for Mr. Saturns to use specifically. Horns of Life in this shop, I gotta make that think they'll uh, make the Geiger's fight pretty safe. Yeah, and they have a lot of money to seed. A lot of the times you'll run, actually, those are really good items in here. Um, yeah, they should be pretty good. Uh, the uh, A lot of times you'll run into this and you'll have enough money for like, three horns of life and then you could get the fourth one and you could get a pile of secret herbs um, i'm definitely a fan of the hybrid horn of life and secret herb strats for getting through gygus um, is that rain pendants in that shop I, um, so. I see a rain pendant on someone's inventory so maybe it was in the shop yeah i um, believe you just, andy just bought a rain pendant out of that shop 
Oh yeah, that, that makes Gygus much more easy. If they can get through first phase one, it should be pretty simple. That said, we do have cursed enemies on and Gygus is no exception. So there could be something really mean on Gygus that is not in the standard prep. And we got a uh, PSI wave gamma for Pooh there. That is normally you'd get Starstorm, um, but Pooh doesn't know Starstorm, Ness knows Starstorm. So he got um, what we call Rockin when it's outside of the Rockin shop, PSI Wave. So that is Rockin Gamma for Pooh, um, okay. which will be useless because Pooh has very few um, psychic points. Yeah, Rockin Gamma is yeah, take, uh, an ex a psychic point hog for sure. Yeah, it takes 40 and Pooh just does not have the ability to keep spamming those. You know, she sped up that cutscene by showing all the kids at once. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's a very recent change. Um, it saves 51 seconds, I timed it. <laughs> that's that's fantastic news, I'm sure. Yeah, um, and people were very happy about that one getting sped up. Um, you also may have noticed that you can return from here, so you can just exit out of here. This is no longer a place of no return. Like yes. Andy's doing final prep. Yeah, so IQ a real, fans... Ate a repel sandwich and going. Yeah, IQ fans are going to have to hope that Andy takes a wipe here. Um, IQ yeah, does and all those need... super bombs help IQ out in getting through yeah. the Gygus in one. Yeah, we don't know what the boss is going to be up here. It could be something very trolly. Um, but they do have good item prep. But there's also cursed enemies, so pretty hard to tell just how difficult this will be. But we'll find out soon. Um, you also notice there's no enemies here. Um, all the top runners, except Andy Perfect when he runs this, um, all okay. the top runners will use uh, repel sandwiches all the way through here. Um, well, a handful. And, such... and Andy, of course, is used to uh, chaining greens, swirls uh, from playing yes. vanilla Earthbound speedruns. Yeah, some people can just get through this at almost walking pace, just from spawn despawning abuse and green swirl chaining. But all of us mere mortals chain repel sandwiches to get through there. <laughs> um, so, I've got a question in chat: What does the rain pendant do for Gygus? Um, Gygus's attacks in phases two and onwards are a all target freeze attack, uh, thunder, and flash. In four sanks, that flash is going to be flash beta, and we have nerfed flash beta for these, so it won't instantly kill anyone. That leaves the all-targeting freeze as the scariest thing that Gygus can do. So that rain pendant does stop the worst that Gygus can do to you. Well, I saw phase one, Gygus has Star Storm instead of Rockin. Is that because Ness has Star Storm? You got it exactly. Um, yeah, so Ness's Nightmare and Gygus will end up with the same thing that end up in the Rockin slot. And this does look pretty dicey. I already see a dead kid and a lot of low HP going on here. Yeah, Star um, Storm is uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, Sky Bills, they'll be flashing not quite yet, and it won't be quite as bad as in the other window, but. Um, Part way into this, um, part way into the next phase of this fight, it'll get very flashy. This this might be a wipe. This this fight has been real hard. Oh. Yeah, this is really rough. Um, looks like they didn't get the PSI shield off. Um, oh, and Titanic Ant has freeze. Yeah, that'll uh, that'll make Ant things was rough. freezing and lightning, I think. But. Uh... Mm. Yep, so one of the options for Curse is to replace things like PSI Magnet with actual threatening PSI. So that makes Titanic Ant a lot scarier when he rolls those curses. Um, so we are playing with cursed enemies and some other like scary flags for people who want to have a hard time. But I should mention that this is a very easy randomizer to get into. Um, if you just load it up and hit the casual preset and go, it's pretty easy to get through. A lot of people finish in about four hours, some earlier, depending on your familiarity with Earthbound. Um, pretty easy to get through. You can always ask a hint man if you're lost. Um, a lot of good times to be had, even doing it casually instead of as a race. So I think despite all those horns of life being available, Andy didn't have any on Ness, so he had no way to revive Paula, so that was um, a wipe. I think Ness ended up paralyzed at some point there, too. I might be misremembering. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah, so you can't use items while you're paralyzed. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, that's one of the trolliest things about Earthbound is all of the stuff that it does to you when you're paralyzed. Although I think he was auto-fighting before that, so I think he might mm. just not have had any horns of life. Uh, or had yeah. used them, because it looks like he has two going in, so maybe he had yeah. used them, or maybe it was just paralyzed. Either way, 
Uh, yeah. It does so, give IQ that opportunity to catch up here. Yeah, IQ is basically here now. may make the difference. Yeah, this is going to end up being very close after all. Um, one more wipe for Andy, it'll be uh, IQ's turn to do this. Though, this is a very spicy Gygus fight. We're going to need to pay a little more attention, because I didn't see why it was just so nasty. Well, those Star Storms were just uh, annihilating. And yeah. uh, Titanic Ant was pushing out damage every turn as well. You know, uh, normally if you've got Gygus, or sorry, Pokey here, Pokey is taking every other turn off, but uh, Titanic Ant sure wasn't. Oh yeah, actually if you have Pokey here and Cursed Enemies on, then the Curses will replace those turns off with really mean things. Mm. Alright, we've got another chance here. Um, freeze in the Ant. It doesn't look like... I see PSI Shield Sigma on Paula, yep. but it doesn't look like Andy is picking it up. No. Just taking the taking the Brain Shocks to the face. Oh, it was the PSI Shield oh. is on Poo this time, okay. Okay. The, that might actually have been what made the last round so difficult, is just accidentally using the regular shield instead of the PSI shield because they got shuffled. Mm, okay, yeah, that was probably it. Yeah, the, the naming of those two is kind of confusing, and if they're not where you expect, you can get very mean um, versions of those. Yeah, we also have PSI shuffle as an option for uh, Ancient Cave Randomizer, but very few people use it. Yeah, it looks like that was the difference, because this time... Uh, Andy through phase one much easier. Yes, much smoother. Um, so we're going to be on to the next Gygases. Um Something that's useful to know when you have an attack shuffle or cursed enemies like that. Um, there are actually three Gygases going through here, and any sort of shuffle or something like that will change at certain points during it. I also see Ness is asleep, so I mentioned that we nerfed Flash Beta. Um, the nerf to Flash Beta replaces the instant death attack with a random status. And it looks like this seed is sleep. Oh, IQ with the triple super bomb, but there was a power shield on the ant. I oh, that gets power th gets through, but did a ton of damage to his characters. Uh, it does think... look like he has the ability to stabilize from that, though. Yeah, thankfully it was not lethal on Paula. That would have been super fast if it wasn't for that power shield. Oh, jeez. Oh, I also just saw. I didn't see exactly what Gygus did to IQ, but it was not something normal. All right. Um. I, or Gygus just stared with its icky eyes. Oh, on both of the characters, that's just going to be a wipe for IQ, I think. Um, yeah, so Gygus has one wasted turn slot, and that cursed enemies setting replaces wasted turns with all sorts of mean things. Yeah, it looks like it's a par paralyzing attack here. I well, don't IQ think... could, could, in theory, pray this out, right? Oh, yeah, he could pray through. Very smart. Looks like going for damage. Um... Oh, and Gygus had a power shield, too. That is very mean. Andy just got through. Andy on a phase three. All right, so this specific turn um, is a different Gygus that'll be randomized differently than the rest. I don't know why they coded it that way, but it is. Also, yeah, flashing lights warning kind of starting now, but not in full effect. IQ through phase two just, well, probably what, 20 seconds behind? Yeah, that sounds about right. It's really close. But he, IQ has one more kid dead, which uh, in some ways means things will go faster. Yeah, though that kid is the, actually, I don't know which kid has brain shock this seed. Um, ooh, and that is a dead Paula already. It looks like uh, diamondization is happening here too. Yep, only Paula left alive for IQ right now. Meanwhile, Andy has to take a turn off of praying to bring Paula back. Ooh, and IQ is taking a death already. Yep, there it is. Yeah, okay, this is a very, very spicy guy, guess. Um, one of the uh, seed vetters did warn me that we had a mean guy guess the seed, and <laughs> I believe he was right. Uh, I don't think it's anything that these two can't handle with another couple of attempts, though. So we had uh, Fast Prayers on uh, for Ancient Cave, and we've also got uh, Fast Prayers on here in PK Scramble. They look a little different, but uh, same result, that the prayer seems go by a lot faster. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Ancient Cave one will replace it with text. This one will just cut out everything that happens during the scene, but still does it. I am trying to get a different way to speed up the prayers that will be very funny if I ever get it to stop being so glitchy. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I'll just leave that vague and exciting and mysterious. Um, yeah, the diamond eyes attack on the final phase of Gygus is really, really mean. 
I haven't seen which attack it is. I think it might be bit down hard, but I haven't been able to tell. Lost two on Andy's side, but Paula's still alive, cranking out those prayers. All right, good luck, runners. Ooh, of light. okay. Oh. Yeah, it looks like the flash. Yeah, yep. so normally in um, Force Sanctuary, the flash that Gygus uses will be flash beta, which can be nerfed. But it looks like the curse has just decided to upgrade all of Gygus' attacks. So that is Flash Gamma, which is quite capable of killing you. Uh, Andy traded off turns, Pooh being dead, Paula being dead, Pooh being dead, and now it's only Pooh, or only Paula left alive. Both the other kids are down. Is he going to take off a turn to Horn of Life? He is. And yeah, it's definitely the play. There's too many things that can go wrong. Um, especially Although that I... Diamond Eyes attack. That would just be a wipe if you only have one kid left. Oh my goodness, oh, that is no. just... That is rude. <laughs> I guess you're rude. Um, Paula sa or Giga says, you're done. Try again. Yeah, the chances of that are extremely low. Um, like, even taking for granted that Gygus has that ability here. Um, that's like a 1 in 4 chance of using that, and then a 1 in 4 chance per kid of, like, instantly killing them. So... Yeah, it's like 1 in 256, I'm guessing, for that to happen. Very, very poor luck for Andy there. Oh, man. Oh, jeez, so IQ's gonna IQ too. trying to get off that Horn of Life to bring Paula back and uh, solidified at least two times, maybe three times in a row, trying to get that Horn of Life off. Jeez, Ooh, Gygus like is <laughs> fighting back today. We have unusually spicy Gyguses on both of these seeds today. Um, yeah, I was talking about how with the equipment that they have and without cursed enemies, this guy, guess, would be very straightforward. Maybe one wipe, but probably not. Um, with that Diamond Eyes attack and that full strength flash, uh, it's a lot spicier. It's only uh, a couple minutes to walk back from the save point with all of these uh, Repel Sandwich DXs. Yeah, definitely. It is a long fight, though, so any of these wipes will let the other one catch up again. Well, IQ can certainly get through phase one quickly if he's willing to uh, take the take the uh, reflex from the uh, super bombs. But I mean, it did get through it quickly, so I I think it's the strategy. I think it's yeah, correct I... to do it, even just taking the reflex and 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 uh, just using the horns of life to get back up. Yeah, I'm betting he's going to keep doing that. It seemed very good last time. Meanwhile, that option isn't available for Andy. He's just got to crank out the damage and. Uh, Probably put up the shields. And yeah, take they'll, be getting, yep. they'll be getting they'll be getting better at this every time too. Taking a more traditional phase one. Yeah, it looks like uh, he has like thunder usage here, which is very dicey in this fight. Right. So the thunder is an interesting interaction here because uh, we're, we're trying to put up the PSI shields to protect from Gygus, but if the thunder hits, uh, this is a vanilla property of PSI thunder. It destroys your entire shield even though you have three shield charges thunder will eat through all of them so the thunder instantly makes whoever it hits vulnerable to the next psi star storm so mm. it, it's a uh, quite a good team up this uh thundering ant and gygus yeah and you can end up with some really funny glitches if you have thunder reflecting back and forth between a uh, franklin badge and gygus's shield I don't know exactly how it happens, but sometimes you end up with an extra enemy that's invisible spawned into here. IQ did not just go for the triple super bomb; instead, took some time to life up to try and keep everyone alive. With that's the, interesting. Uh, with the uh, with also doing the shields, so IQ going into phase two with all the kids alive took a little extra time to do it. Uh, I think looks so like a he, very he's... stable position though. Yeah, he's much more stable. He doesn't have to recover now, but it did take extra time, and well, we're both in phase two. We'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah, we have a uh, reason good in chat is asking a very insightful question about should they try for Magic Ant here to protect against this? Um, I haven't actually seen which diamondization attack this is. Um, Magic Ant could help against um, Bit Down Hard. It wouldn't really do anything against Flash Gamma unless Magic Ant had better pendants for them to use to get past that. IQ using the remaining super bombs to get through phase two and has passed Andy. He got into phase two behind Andy, but he's leaving phase two ahead of Andy. Pretty big. 
pretty big. Um, another question from chat. Someone's asking about how the trackers work. Those are the trackers that the runners themselves are using. So they have those for their own use, and we're just spying on their notes to figure out how those work. Yep. All that information irrelevant now as they've done everything they need to do to get to Gygus and are now just, just got to win this fight. Yep. Um, it is an extraordinarily spicy Gygus, though. Can Gygus diamond eyes himself? That's a good question. What would happen if you confuse this Gygus who can diamond eyes? I think you would just win. Yeah, I That's think That's a really it, uh, good question, yeah. Um, if you um, somehow win this fight normally, then you do um, just successfully get to the end. Um, so yeah, I could see that being a very good strat here. Yeah, I guess you would skip... It might skip phase three entirely. <laughs> Um, yeah, it uh, does. That's great. Lethal damage, unfortunately, here as Paula prays. So there's still healing items on this. Uh, wow, this is very, very mean, I guess. Last healing item. Oh, no. That's a lot Just of as fun. he was using the last healing, as Andy was using the last healing item, I guess makes him numb. Jeez. I just saw an one last stone. horn of life oh, and the that's diamond a, eyes. That's another. Oh, that's so mean. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if a magic camp play or something else to get them better prepped might be the thing to do. Um, if they switch back to okay pendants instead of rain pendants, that would also help them with all those flashes. Looks like Andy's opting to dive back in. Sandwiching away back to this guy, I guess. Yeah, it looks like both op runners are just going for the RNG, hope that they get there. Um, good luck, both runners. They have a solid plan for getting through phase one, they've both done it and ended up in a good. Uh, spot in phase two uh, Getting into phase three has been dicey and then actual phase three has just been murder Yeah, this phase three guy guess is uh, Really really mean um, Picking up some different pendants I think would probably give them a better chance at this point um, Also the diamond eyes attack. I still haven't seen whether it's bit down hard or um, dared with his eerie eyes um, if it's bit down hard, then increasing luck stat somehow would help, and if it's eerie eyes, then a paralysis protection item would get them through this. Well, and also in theory, if they uh, confuse Gagas in phase two, and it does that diamond eyes on itself. Yeah, do you think we should just inform the runners that we think that might get them through it? Uh, we can try. I mean, uh, it would be yeah, fun to see happen. <laughs> yeah, I would so love that to be how we options. finish this the, uh, the safe one, it, they do have a uh, brain shock, uh, which applies the confusion effect. Another way to get the confusion effect on an enemy, because not en every enemy is vulnerable to brain shock, one of the prayers will confuse everyone on the battlefield. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a way, If because I believe in vanilla, uh, Diamond Dog is not vulnerable to... <laughs> oops. Uh, IQ accidentally hit, uh, tried to run away. Oops. Um, I believe in vanilla, you can't brain shock uh, Diamond Dog, but you can pray to confuse it and see that, uh, see Diamond Dog Diamond Eyes himself in vanilla. You can do that in the vanilla game. So if, if that's something you want to see, uh, using prayers until you get that one in 16 chance of confusing everybody on the battlefield is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, some questions in chat. This is not a good example of how Gygus normally is in PK Scramble. We did turn on extra difficulty flags, and the extra difficulty flags did decide to have a field day with this particular Gygus. If you want to get into PK Scramble, there's an extensive guide on the website, and also you can just load it up and talk to Hintman whenever you're stuck. All right, everyone alive, prayer one for IQ. All right, let's go IQ. Oh, and we're on to the prayer Andy. scene for Andy, so let's go Andy. Mm -hmm. So now that we're in uh, the second prayer, Gygus, they could uh, choose to try and confuse Gygus again if they want. And IQ is going to do it, fires off this brain shock. Right. Generally a good idea for phase three, uh, regardless. Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised they haven't been doing that already. Um, like no matter what ridiculous things Gygus is doing, that does reduce them by half. Yep, half of them go the other way. I, I do want to see Gygus diamondize himself. I do want to see it real bad. Yeah, Even I if think it just would... breaks the game, I want to see it. And if they break the game by diamondizing Gygus, then I think that's a moral victory at the very least. Um, I know if you poison Gygus, it does a funny glitch until you finish your prayers. Uh, I think that may be only on the uh, GBA version of oh, really? two. Interesting. That you can uh, poison Gygus out and kill him and kind of break the game. Interesting. Um, we actually have had, during the development of this, a couple of broken Gyguses. Um Andy here was actually helping me test something with Boss Shuffle and ended up with, um, he beat the first phase of Gygus and it never advanced to the next, so it was just only that first phase Gygus without a helper and nothing you could do about it. Hmm, um, whoops. Alright, both runners in phase three, both runners have a confused Gygus, both runners cranking out those prayers. All right, let's go, runners. Open to dodge all these instant kills. Diamond eyes on Paula for Andy. Yeah. Does he have anything to do about it? It looks like oh, that's really life noodles. That looks really smart of Andy. He was waiting for Paula to run down on HP, so she'd be dead instead of diamond eyes, which means that cup of life noodles will come with a full heal in addition. Yep. Nice heads up play. Now, unfortunately, Ness is confused, so any more uh, heals that Ness do does might go to the wrong person. All right. This is prayer eight for IQ. All right. Good luck, IQ. That's looking good. Um, there's that chance of the full flash kill again, but um, very rare that you die on prayer eight. Prayer eight. All right. One more. Will we see prayer nine fire? All right, yes. that looks like it's it. All right, GG. Um, looks like IQ has finally pulled this out. Um, great work, both runners. I was really, really close. Congratulations to IQ for taking down this nasty guy. It's nasty guy, guess is guy guy all around for uh, this for tonight. Uh, Goose Goose. <laughs> a, lot of people, a lot of people in the community call him Gookie. All right, on we've gotten through that guy. Looks like Andy as well. Yeah, it looks like Andy is also getting through it. Um, looks like that uh, hint we gave them about confusing Gygus was the play. Yeah. One Incredible more. racing for both runners. Yep, there's lightning, so that should be good. Yep, and it was also, yep. I'm almost certain, targeted at Gygus. Yes. All right, Andy's through too. That was very close. So thank you everyone for showing up and watching this. Thank you, Chaz, for helping commentate, and thank you to the runners for putting on such a great show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, um, we are over time, so I don't know if we'll be able to see uh, the extremely great credit sequence that you've made on this. Uh, maybe yeah. we'll catch a little bit of it as we go out. Yeah, um, that's definitely up to the show runners because we are a bit over time. Thank go you. for it. Um, all right, so yeah, we're going to see the credits here. Um, Starting out on IQ signed, um, we get to see, well, wait a second, so I don't just spoil it instantly before it happens. Um, this is the spoiler progression of the entire seed. 
that you can see where everything was, including the stuff they did not do, in whatever goofy order the logic thought you were supposed to do. And then once it rolls through that, we'll see a few more statistics about their run before going on with the actual credits. This credit show is so cool. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I actually did this because I could not figure out how to edit the other credit sequence at all. Yeah, I, I had to do quite a few hacks to uh, to do even the one credit sequence. But uh, yeah. this, this is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, the, the ending of this is good, too, so I would stay tuned for that. For anyone who liked what you saw, um, this is PK Scramble. You can find it at pkscramble.com. Um, it does not normally end with Gygus uh, diamondizing you on everything, though Gygus is still scary. Um, if you were tuned in before we started running this run, then that was Ancient Cave, which is at earthbound.app. Also an excellent runner, we are, or excellent randomizer. We're blessed to have two excellent randomizers for the Earthbound community. That's a lot of fun. We've got a IQ and Andy here. GG on both of you getting through that rough gagus. Yeah, uh, feel free to complain to the seed vetters. Uh, I will. I'll let worry. you know where they live. <laughs> I'll let you know where they live. <laughs> um, I think it was you or Andy by like one and a half Gyguses, I'd like to say. Um, yeah, it was very, very close, especially once you started having that phase three Gygus with Flash Gamma and uh, what was the Diamond Eyes attack? Uh, yeah, a like, bit down hard, yeah. Bit down hard. Yeah, that is a mean attack without the other mean attack. Basically just a full strength diamond dog all through Gygus. Yeah, that was really mean. Um, also on their uh, spoiler log here, you can see the levels that the bosses were and the levels that they fought them at. Just wanted to point that out for everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, mine didn't yeah. last very long either. I didn't even see what happened to your flying man, Andy. I was just, like, looking away, and then you didn't have one. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. You also did a different seconds section. apart, the two of you. Excellent. Wow, oh, nice. Wow. Very closely raced. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you two have to get to the top of the turn first. We've got eight no problem here's and five teleport bonks for IQ and IQ, none of your kids remember to brush their teeth. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We're gonna see the counter for that very soon, so prepare to be mortified. Yeah. I haven't actually brushed the number of people. I have to brush your teeth. There's some fun, uh, fun pictures in these uh, last credits as well. But, uh, yeah, I think thank we you, can. IQ oh, and nice. Andy, for running this, and thanks to Andy and Thomas for running our previous seed. We are also blessed in this community to have a variety of excellent Andys. <laughs> I think that'll pretty much do it for us. Uh, thank you to GDQ for letting us feature uh, our Earthbound randomizers to all of you. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to show them off. Uh, any other shout outs for y'all for the community before we close down? Um, I think I already got all mine out of the way, but I'd also like to mention that the Earthbound um, modding community, PK Hack, is excellent, and I wouldn't have been able to do this without them and the uh, Coil Snake community that made the uh, tool that we actually used to modify this. Yep, them and the uh, and the Earthbound speedrunning community are both two great communities that made all this possible. Yeah, definitely. And thanks again to GDQ for letting us run this doubleheader of two different randos. It's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much to y'all for the awesome showcase. I wish Gygus would have been a little nicer to y'all, but, you know, that's <laughs> how randomizers go. But very entertaining. It was so great. I'd like to thank you all for all of your hard work as well. All right, folks, we are not done here yet on GDQ Hot Fix. We actually have a brand new show just about to happen. So stay tuned for Aimbot. Take care, everybody.